A legbeard buys a snack. Amanda story. There are a lot of Amanda stories. This is a new series, so welcome in. I posted this yesterday, but the text didn't show for some reason. Snowed in, I figured that I'd just rewrite the whole debacle. Well, that's one way to spend your time. I gotta admire OP's perseverance there. Amanda was a legbeard that I knew throughout childhood. When I knew her, she was at best like a proto legbeard. Later, she would gain weight, find anime, and fully embrace her destiny. <laughs> she was slightly shorter than average, with an average build and sandy hair. Her face was rather fleshy and poorly put together, even when she was thin. She reminded me of the characters from Oblivion. Oh. <laughs> How's it going? So what you mean is she got a potato face? That's like every character in Oblivion. <laughs> For this tale, Amanda was not the focus, although it does show off her personality nicely. No, the focus was on Mr. Napoleon, our band director. Napoleon was short, round, and fought for the greatness that he thought he deserved when in actuality he didn't. Sounds like another neckbeard teacher to me. Hey, check out the School of Beard series if you haven't yet. Thanks so much. <laughs> this tale starts with a parade. Oh, I love a parade. It was some huge multi-county event with a dozen divisions, a huge number of marching bands, parades, local groups, fire trucks. Yeah, the whole works. It was scheduled for the height of midsummer heat. Good, crank the hose on the fire trucks. Get everybody all misted and stuff. It's gonna be so much fun. <laughs> we were slated for the last division, and Mr. Napoleon was rather excited, as the other band in our division was some award-winning, nationally ranked marching band. He began to work himself into a tizzy, planning to show up this rival band. Before long, he was phrasing it as though he and the other director had some sort of rivalry. I'm pretty sure the rival director never thought twice about Napoleon. <laughs> Napoleon was so desperate to win our division. <laughs> uh, we're gonna get to see his, his downfall. Far too much hubris in this tiny, tiny man. We were slated with extra practices so that we would be on point. His other plan included intimidation. When the rival band showed up, we would already be drilling in the parking lot, and not in a fun way, <laughs> which somehow was meant to strike fear into the hearts of the rival players. <laughs> uh, that's adorable, dude. You're taking all this far too seriously. The day of the parade, we did get there early, Rules were that we weren't allowed any personal items off the bus other than the instruments and music, and that we had to be in full uniform from the moment we stepped off the bus until we were back on it after the parade. Oh yeah, he's right. Tight ship, isn't he? <laughs> Our uniform, for the record, consisted of a heavy wool coat, equally heavy wool pants, unbreathable shoes with knee-height socks, and a pot like a hat made from plastic. We had arrived at the parade setup long before anyone else. The sun was still rising, and yet, it was still toasty. Yeah, probably because the wool pants and wool coat and all this. The whole marching band about to melt. <laughs> uh, so we drilled, and we marched, and we played as the sun rose and the people arrived and other bands started piling out. We marched as it got hot, and then it got hotter. Our postures melted. As you get exhausted, your tone starts to go flat, so we were starting to sound really awful. Altogether, we were drilling for over three hours straight, when finally, the rival band arrived to find us milling around in circles, sounding terrible. <laughs> uh, you should have saved it. You spent all of this energy early in the morning for no reason whatsoever. And probably you're gonna, you're gonna be burnt out before the parade, right? It's a terrible plan, terrible plan. Anyways, rival band was dressed in slacks and polo shirts. The director told them to relax in the nearby pavilion in the shade until it was closer for them to queue up. See, keeping them well rested, that director knows what he's doing. 
<laughs> Finally, Mr. Napoleon decided to give us a break, and we began a frantic search for water. We were by a little league field, and they had a concession stand open, but because we weren't allowed personal items, none of us had any money. That ain't a personal item, that's the government's. <laughs> uh, IRS is coming. What was it that was in your pocket, though? Because it seemed interesting. It seemed like really interesting. What, what was it? So about now is where Amanda, our leg beard, finally enters. I didn't even notice that she wasn't there. I was so entertained by Mr. Napoleon falling on his face. <laughs> but Amanda rather proudly announced that she had a $20 bill stashed behind her music. Well, hallelujah. The stand was selling water at three or four small bottles for a buck. So this was enough for most of the band to have some water. We all began to sing the praises of our friend when she said, No! No? No! It was her money! She wasn't gonna buy us any water! Then why did you even bother telling us about the $20 bill? Bro, you're just the worst. This is how you get robbed. <laughs> uh, bribes, threats, begging, nothing could change Amanda's mind. Instead, she just looked smug and then proudly announced that she was hungry and headed towards the concession stand. Dude, she's insufferable. Are you, you, you get the legs, all right? I'm going for the head. <laughs> uh, we're gonna get some money right now. Thirst at that moment was winning out over other emotions, so in frantic desperation, we headed across the street to a video rental place, burst in the door, still in full uniform, and begged for water. Today, the blockbuster gods were kind. <laughs> the manager provided us with a handful of tiny Dixie cups and let us drink from the bathroom sink located in the back room. God, not ideal, but needs must, I suppose. We lined up, probably 50 band members, spilling out the back door and frantically filling those cups, handing them down the line to someone who would shotgun the water and hand the cup back to be refilled again. I, I suppose Mr. Napoleon nor Amanda has ever heard of heat stroke, right? <laughs> this is such a bad situation to be in. During this rehydration session, Amanda made her way back from the concession stand through the parking lot around the building to sit on the curb where she would be in full view of the people waiting for water. She had balanced in each hand a bounty of concession goods, nachos, hot dogs, chips, candy bars, two sodas, all $20 clearly spent. She began shoving these items into her mouth noisily staring at us completely smug. Yeah, basically, hater. <laughs> uh, why, why are you doing this? Do you think this is gonna win you friends? <laughs> uh, I don't get it. To everyone's credit, we didn't end her life. No, instead we got a call that the break was over and we had to get back to drilling. Everyone reluctantly gave up on the wait for water and we started in again. Marching and playing and sweating. Heat was coming off the asphalt in waves that you could feel through the soles of these cheap band shoes. Everyone's wool uniforms were dark with sweat. I kind of wonder what state or country OP lives in that they just would not expect it to be hot. You got these wool uniforms that you spend a grip on and then the shoes are just complete trash. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, finally our division was queuing up, which meant that rival band finally came out of relaxing in the shade with their water bottles, and they did a quick warm-up and got in formation. Our band, however, slogged over the line. Amanda was placed in the front row in the outer column, and I was beside her. The parade finally started, the route seemingly uphill the entire way. Most people had stopped watching, going indoors to escape the heat. <laughs> we weren't even technically marching by this point, just sort of walking. We sounded terrible, because music is hard to read through sweat. I was understandably 
not very sympathetic towards Amanda at this moment. So I was ignoring the fact that every time she put down her clarinet, she would let out a moan or a groan. Oh yeah, life's so hard. Of course Amanda plays clarinet. If I had to pick, I'd say clarinet or French horn. My first guess. <laughs> Uh, by the time we got turned down the block where the judges were, we were barely shambling along like zombies. We could have sounded better if we were farting through our instruments. <laughs> uh, the drum major looked like she should be carried off in a stretcher. And this was the moment that all the snacks Amanda had consumed came back to haunt her. She turned her head, walking along with the band, and puked up all of those concession goodies. <laughs> uh, beautiful. It ended up being a block-long streak of vom, front and center in front of the judges. Obviously, we, uh, we didn't win division. <laughs> uh... Karma always finds a way, you know, <laughs> you didn't want to share with, with your teammates, you wanted to be just, just a hog, really is what it is. <laughs> You're being a freaking pig for no reason whatsoever, instead of helping out the people around you, and, and there, it, it strikes back. I'm glad it happened, I wish I could say I feel bad for it, but I really, really don't, and it's painted quite a picture of Amanda, so I'm excited to see what other sort of shenanigans she'll get into. Like I said, this series, super long. There's lots of Amanda to feast upon. So let us see what Amanda has in store for us in the next story, right now. Surfing USA, an Amanda story. I'm taking bets on whether she's gonna throw up anywhere. Go ahead, put your money on the table. <laughs> this story is about Amanda. A leg beard that I knew throughout my childhood and throughout high school. In high school, she was short, average weight, with sandy blonde hair and a fleshy face. I thought she was average height in the last one, whatever. In college, she gained weight and found the ways of anime, but I knew her in her proto leg beard days. I graduated in 2002, so I went through high school right at the era of extreme sports becoming a thing. <laughs> Going skateboarding after school was common. All the cool guys were getting BMX bikes, etc. Amanda fell into crushes hard and fast, so half the guys she was into would brag about their sporting abilities and play them up. Most common of her crush's talents, though, was snowboarding. So I take it maybe they do live in a cool place. If it was snowboard, that's why everybody has wool jackets in the last one. Maybe Mr. Napoleon isn't completely mentally deficient. <laughs> maybe. <laughs> uh, my small town was just outside the Pocono Mountains. So a fair number of kids had grown up skiing or worked at one of the ski lodges as a part-time job. One of the closest slopes had just opened up to snowboarding. A member of the marching band was one of their first snowboarding instructors and had scored a ton of discount coupons to come and try out a session with him. So, in high school tradition, we packed as few cars full of as many people as would fit, and we drove out there. <laughs> I mean, this is good for him. He's not doing it for free, it's just discounted. He's counting stacks this weekend. Buku bucks, I guarantee! Anyways, Amanda seemed to be in rare form on this particular day. She complained about the car being overcrowded and complained about the car itself and the walk from the parking lot. Oh, it was just too far and wearing rented ski gear. Oh, that's so gross. She was rude and talked back during the orientation that our friend, the ski instructor, was giving us. She had spent time watching people snowboard and listening to people talk about snowboarding Instruction wasn't necessary. Oh yeah, totally, she knows it all. Some people gotta learn the hard way, OP. Just let it happen. All that was required was for Amanda to be let loose upon the snow to prove her innate talent and use this to woo all the hot snowboarding guys. Woo! <laughs> woo! Woo! 
After the class break, I ended up far away from Amanda. Thanks to the acoustics of the slope, however, I could still hear her complaining, even when I couldn't see her through the trees. Snowboarding, it seemed, wasn't as easy as she thought. Yet, yeah, what made you think it was gonna be? You're sliding down a mountain on a plank of wood strapped to your feet. Skiing is so much easier. Definitely ski if you're going for the first time, okay? Just pro tip. <laughs> I spent a few hours falling and finding new and inventive ways of injuring myself on the snowy mountain before deciding that snowboarding just wasn't for me. <laughs> yeah, same vibe here. A few other friends had come to the same conclusion and we headed back to the lodge where we found Amanda, tucked angrily in a corner, complaining about the subpar hot chocolate. Bro, it's Swiss Miss, okay? Get out of my face. <laughs> uh, give me your money and go, I don't care. <laughs> One, <laughs> One of my friends there was a perfect teenage jerk, and he started chiding her about how she had claimed she would be a natural snowboarder. Honestly, not very jerkish a-hole move in this situation. She deserves it. What happened to her that she was back so soon? <laughs> uh, slight bully, but I don't know. You set yourself up. Amanda blamed the rental equipment. Our friends, who were good skiers and snowboarders, had their own equipment, so obviously renting something made you bad at the sport. And not that being good at something and sticking with it made you more likely to invest. A uh, duh. Yeah, Amanda's not too great with the, the critical thinking faculties, is she? <laughs> Besides, she argued, this time with a snowboard was utterly wasted on her, as she was in her heart of hearts a surfer. What? <laughs> uh, yeah, it's different, but the same. I mean, some things do apply, I guess. The balance, different weight distribution. And OP uh, does give Amanda credit. She stuck to her BS obvious lie with conviction. <laughs> her wardrobe slowly had more surfboards on it, Roxy and Quicksilver. She managed to get surfing stickers on her locker. <laughs> Bro, don't you live in the Northeast? <laughs> uh, how good are the waves out there, man? Amanda's yearbook activities for that year listed surf club a thing which in no way, shape, or form existed. <laughs> uh, she would wax philosophical about graduating and moving down to the beach and just riding the waves. Tell you what's gonna happen to you, Amanda. You're gonna end up living in a van down by the river. <laughs> uh, for the most part, this future talk wasn't really an issue. We were 15, all still contemplating our adult life. Everyone was still changing their when I grow ups on a daily basis. Maybe she would go on to become a surfer. Who really knew? No, the issue was that she outright claimed that she was, right now, a proficient surfer in a landlocked town. <laughs> <laughs> who dodged the question when she was asked if she had ever surfed. This is just sad, honestly. She, she really wants her own identity, but she's not interesting enough to come up with it herself. <laughs> just like, yeah, I guess. Surfing, that's my thing. Don't ask me to do it. <laughs> Nobody asked me to do it. So, at some point, she started talking incessantly about this little hot dog stand outside of town. She claimed that her uncle was buying it for her and was going to convert it into a surf shop <laughs> in a landlocked town. <laughs> it's not exactly a business mind either. She'd cover the outside with bamboo and sell surfboards and surfwear. The fact that buying a surfboard in the mountains made about as much sense as buying a snowblower in the desert never seemed to factor into this for Amanda. Did anybody ever just sit her down and be like, look, you ain't got to lie to kick it. <laughs> we all know you're lying and it's not really a good look. So just stop. Be real with me. Then I could be real with you. Again, all of this wasn't in a wishful sort of way. No, 
Amanda said this straight-faced, and any attempt to tell her that it sounded completely made up was met with resistance. Ugh, you'll all see, she would say. They were buying merchandise for the store right now. Uh, her uncle was signing the papers on the building as we spoke. How do you think this is going to work out? <laughs> you're you're going to get a, a year or two into this lie and just be like, yeah, paperwork's still not finished. I don't know. Nobody believed it to start with. It's only getting less believable. Please stop. Please stop. <laughs> not surprisingly, the hot dog stand remained a hot dog stand. It's always money in a banana stand. Anyways, things came to a head autumn of my junior year. For reasons that I don't quite remember, we decided to go to Atlantic City over fall break. The cost of this trip was decided purely by how many human beings we could fit into a hotel room to split up the costs. And the answer to that is, yeah, a lot. <laughs> how much floor space we got? How many people can sleep on the floor? It's like 15 to 20 people in one hotel room. You split up the cost, that's about 350. About 350. Goddamn lock this monster. <laughs> so the second that this trip was even starting to be considered, Amanda was ecstatic. She was going to the beach where she would meet her surfer brethren. Finally. And this would somehow show us all. <laughs> Uh, you know what they have a lot of in Atlantic City? Casinos. You know what they don't have a lot of? Surfing. Especially in November. Are the 15-year-old kids going to the casino? Is there stuff to do in Atlantic City? Like, Las Vegas is kind of more for kids these days. At least more than it was back in the day. But Atlantic St City still seems like, yeah, just a seedy place that's full of gambling. I got a lot of questions, but sometimes uh, high school kids make decisions. Whatever. <laughs> Moreover, Amanda's version of what the beach would be like seems straight out of a 1950s movie. Surfboards lined up, dancing, random bonfires with people singing to a ukulele and swaying palm trees. Yeah, none of that was really the case in New Jersey. <laughs> Uh, I still feel really bad for her, although I'm, I'm sure that feeling won't persist for very long, as happens in Legbeard stories. As you might have guessed, this trip was fairly doomed from the start. None of us were old enough to gamble, yeah that was my first thought, <laughs> and the shows in the casinos were either out of our price range or required walking across the gaming floor, which is, of course, a no-no, because none of us were old enough to gamble. Most things were closed for the season, leaving us few things to do other than frisbee, played in our sweatshirts, on the beach. Add to this that sleeping 12 to a room meant that no one was actually sleeping, and it was a pretty cranky experience. <laughs> Uh, it's, it's a miserable idea. Pay the extra money for your own room. It'll be worth it. <laughs> the sole shining gem among all of this was Amanda's discovery. You see, Amanda had wandered off on the first day. After looking around desperately for the surfers that she was trying to find, she came back subdued. Day two, however, she rushed in excited. She had found a legit surf shop. Oh, it was all just like she had dreamed. <laughs> uh, yeah, dreamed and actively lied about both of those things. We went to see, mostly out of morbid curiosity, to find out if she had really fallen into an alternative reality, which honestly, not outside the realm of possibility. <laughs> uh, the shop was a souvenir shop with a slight tiki theme to it. They had shot glasses and t-shirts with Atlantic City on them. Uh, cheap sunglasses, posters, and incense. The closest thing we found to anything surf themed was a few boogie boards sitting in the back. But Amanda was making out like this was the greatest retail experience ever. A real surf shop. Ah, oh, man, she don't get out too much, do she? <laughs> Uh, again, I want to feel bad for you, but you lied about all this. You even, 
you, you even lied to get people to come and look at this thing with you. I can't help her. I can't fix her. I just hope she, she reaches a realization at some point. It's probably not going to happen. Like I said, there's a lot of these stories. <laughs> the second we made it inside of this surf shop, Amanda strutted over to the counter and gestured to the clerk who looked around our age. This is Matt, she said. Mm, Matt. She batted her eyes at him. Did he not go blind at that point? <laughs> we all politely browsed the store, but Amanda was all over that counter and the guy behind it. She would lean across the table, laid backwards on the counter looking up at him. <laughs> Uh, you tried so hard. Just pack it in, please. There were sighs, heaving bosoms, licked lips. That poor guy. He was like a rabbit caught in a trap. Yeah, he's only being nice to you because he works here, Amanda. Stop it. Ah, uh, I bet you're a real surfer. She breathed at him when we came to check out. Matt shook his head. No, <laughs> looking confused. This wasn't the answer that Amanda was looking for, which was basically the only reason that we got her back out of that shop. Should have left her there, dude. <laughs> it's just easier that way. The way back, she would occasionally sigh. Oh, I bet Matt just didn't want to brag. I bet he surfs all the time working at a surf shop. This literally went on for months. <laughs> With her occasionally getting all dreamy-eyed and musing out loud that she wondered what Matt was doing. <laughs> uh, uh, she is kind of like Starfish Beard in her way, isn't she? Just lovesick and, and very, very not too bright. <laughs> a friend managed to get an autograph of a contestant in the X Games. Huge 2000s bragging rights, by the way. And this, of course, was nothing compared to the championship surfer that Amanda could have totally hooked up with back at THE beach, if only she hadn't been sharing a room with 11 other people. Ah, but such are the wages of love, I do suppose. <laughs> uh, someone got her in the Secret Santa swap that year and bought her a load of rocket power, that Nickelodeon cartoon stuff, and everyone except Amanda thought it was hysterical. I'll admit to you guys right here and now, I told a lot of stupid lies in my younger days, stuff that I thought would make me look cool. And with an older person's perspective looking back on it, yeah, dude, that's a lot of cringe. That's heavy cringe. Not as heavy as some of the stuff that we get into around here, but it's all relative, isn't it? Amanda ain't a surfer. She probably ain't ever going to be a surfer. But it's good to have big dreams, you know? It's much easier to say this is something that I'd like to do than, than convince people that it's a thing that you actually do when you don't actually do it. Right? This makes sense? All right. Anyways, uh, we'll get one more story in here. Like I said, there's a lot of these. So we're going to do three per episode. Uh, God willing. <laughs> time permitting. All right. Let's hop into it. A leg beard's crushes and uh taking one for the team. Amanda stories. Oh no. Did you bang a leg beard, bro? <laughs> Can you tell me right now? Oh this is the continuing tale of Amanda. A leg beard that I knew through her formative years. She was average weight, a bit short, with a fleshy face and sandy blonde hair. Later she would go on to gain weight lose hygiene, and discover anime. But these are the tales of her high school years. During the high school years, epic in scale and number were the loves of Amanda. Crushes came out of nowhere, and they were all encompassing, and desperate, and downright terrifying. Sounds like standard leg beard fair to me, honestly. <laughs> I had... On a few separate occasions, had the pleasure of watching Amanda flirt. It involved invading personal space, batting her eyes, heaving her chest out, and contorting into poses. 
Yeah, like she's laying on the counter with that surf shop, dude. <laughs> Uh, it's not working for me or anybody else. Basically, she was acting like a puppy, trying to get a piece of scotch tape off of its back. But usually, her method of operation for crushes was just outright stalking. I'm surprised she didn't get recruited by the NSA, thanks to this intensive training. Usually, the intended crushy only learned that they were the object of her affection, when they would get a tingle in the back of their neck and turn to see Amanda half hidden behind a support pole in the cafeteria, staring. She would ask to go to the bathroom and instead duck over to watch her guy through the window of their classroom. God help you if you happen to have one of her crushes in class with you. You would be grilled on the play-by-play. -play. Did they talk to anyone? Were they looking at anyone? Uh, what did they say in class discussions? Bro, is it that hard to chill? <laughs> Just be cool. I mean, I get it. The hormones are raging. It's, it's, it's a hard thing to manage sometimes. But at least try. At least practice. <laughs> uh, meanwhile... Her notebooks would be filled with block letter renditions of their name, her first name and their last name, Mr. and Mrs. his last name, her and his last names hyphenated, tiny hearts surrounding his name. <laughs> She'd try to find pictures of them, which she would then pair with hers. Thank God this was the era before we all had Photoshop. In extreme cases, she would name their children, sketch out their house. <laughs> uh, their living room would be green and they would have their Christmas tree in front of the window. And they called it puppy love. <laughs> uh, maybe this goes a little bit beyond that. This is definitely getting into creepier and creepier territory. You bring imaginary children into the mix and I'm like, all right, I'm out. <laughs> I can't. The biggest mistake came when she managed to become the school newspaper photographer. Oh, <laughs> what kind of hiring practice is this? Basically, it gave her carte blanche to attend and take pictures of the most recent object of her infatuation. At some point, though, she attempted to take pictures inside the boy's locker room and her duties as photographer were unceremoniously stripped away as they should be. What are you doing? Bro, I just, how do you not get expelled? I can't, I can't. <laughs> Anyways, the good news for anyone who found themselves as Amanda's crush du jour was that they never really lasted that long. In fact, it usually took about two weeks for her to break up with a guy that she was never dating, usually for some tiny perceived slight. Or in actuality, she finally came to the realization that they're never going to be interested. These were catastrophic events, of course. And Amanda would burn the doodles and the pictures of that guy, crying to anyone who would listen. She would say nasty things behind their backs as they passed in the hall, or spread rumors about their girlfriend. Quite remarkable, considering that these were usually guys that she had never actually had a conversation with. This is all very worrying. I think it's time for, for somebody to go on a list, at least go to therapy. This could escalate in a very bad direction. Uh, the best part was, this was a small school with some slim pickings, meaning a number of unlucky guys went through this whole ritual more than once. <laughs> God. Uh, her tendency towards crushes came in handy once, though. Contrasted to Amanda's rapid psycho crushes was the unrequited love of my friend Jennifer. Jennifer had moved to town at 12 and instantly fell in love with the boy across the street, John, who was a year older than she was. This crush was a well-kept secret, however, as John was dating a girl who all call Helga. And Helga was a massive girl, standing over six feet tall, broad shoulders, hands like bowling balls. <laughs> I can only really account for their relationship through the fact that John 
must have had a proclivity for, uh, larger women, Helga was known to get in fights and to beat up anyone who even glanced at John. That's all right, Jennifer's over there biding her time. As long as John doesn't move, he's right across the street. I know where you live, so I'm ahead of the game. <laughs> <laughs> Faced with the mountain who menstruates. <laughs> what a nickname, dude. Uh, Jennifer was playing her crush really close to her chest, vowing that she would say something if and only if they ever broke up. Somehow, they didn't. Dating all throughout high school and into college, Meanwhile, Jennifer only had eyes for John for literally years. Yeah, that one-itis can be real strong every once in a while, you know? I was in on this crush, and one day Jennifer slipped me a note in class, folded, of course, into a tiny triangle, which both said dreamy things about John and nasty things about Helga. I was putting things into my locker when I must have dropped it, Turning around, I saw Helga, reading the letter, getting progressively more red-faced and angry. Oh boy. That document probably should have been marked as confidential, stuffed away in a file somewhere. How did Helga just happen to read this random letter on the fl- There's more to the story, OP. The whole logic here is a little bit sus, but I'ma let you get away with it for now. <laughs> Thankfully, Helga's logic was simple. She had found an unsigned, unaddressed note that said unflattering things about herself and apparently the intention to go after her boyfriend. It was found by a short wall of lockers where there were only two girls. One was known for being rude and nasty to people and also for crushing on literally every guy in high school. And so the next thing you know, Amanda finds herself checked into a wall whacked across the face while an angry Helga bellows a stream of insults and threats to stay away from her boyfriend. Helga was suspended for fighting. Amanda was both bruised and confused. I was amused. <laughs> and Jennifer passed well under suspicion. Honestly, again, karma for Amanda. <laughs> uh, I I'm grateful that Jennifer was able to slip by. She seems like a sweet girl, just just a bad case of one-itis that'll never happen. But Amanda, she, she's mean, she's selfish, she's nasty. She obviously uh, doesn't see boys as people if she's just out there trying to collect them all, so... Okay, good. I'm glad Helga was able to teach you a lesson. Like I said, I'd like to feel bad, but it's getting harder and harder the more of these we read. Mom! and Bring the meatloaf! INSULTING ROYALTY! Another Amanda story. If you missed the previous Amanda stories, well, that link down in the description. There's a lot of these to get through. And honestly, I'm grateful. So this story starts way back. We were only 12 or 13 at the time. As our parents were friends, we found ourselves hanging out when our parents had social time. When we were in elementary school, this worked okay. But this became an issue as we got older, and Amanda got weirder, <laughs> as beards are wont to do. Her parents owned a vacation house, which was really just a mobile home permanently on a camping ground with a back deck and a grill that cost basically as much as the house. They'd hold get-togethers there, and we would swim in the pool and eat copious amounts of barbecue. Bro, they got a pool? I'm sold. That's all I ever wanted in this world. <laughs> I don't care if it's next to a trailer. Anyways, it was at one of these get-togethers that Amanda looked at me and said, My uncle told me that my great-grandfather was Genghis Khan! Uh, <laughs> now, even at this young age, Amanda was known to be an outright liar. I nuh-uhed all her uh-huhs and then demanded that she prove it. Bro, how are you supposed to prove something like that? 13-year-olds can't afford a DNA test. I guess just the fact that she says great-grandpa instead of great-great-great-great infinitely repeating grandpa. To my amazement, it was at this point that Amanda ran over to her uncle and demanded that he validate this heritage. 
He laughed and said that Genghis Khan wasn't her great-grandfather. There were a lot more greats in there, but that yes, Amanda was descended from Genghis Khan. Now, I have since learned that a huge amount of the population is descended from Genghis Khan, so this was probably just a really good guess based on their background. Still, I was quite impressed with it at the time. Oh my god, she won. She's gonna hold on to this forever. We're never gonna get any peace. Amanda demanded an apology, which I gave, and she flounced off quite smug and vindicated that she had been right and I had been proven wrong. Later that day, we were alone in the pool when she decided to push things further. You know how my uncle said my grandpa was Genghis Khan? Uh, well, it turns out that's not all. My uncle's royalty, and I'm actually a princess. A secret princess, like Anastasia. Which is probably a movie that had just come out at the time. <laughs> Again, I called BS. And again, we nah would and ah would for a little while before I demanded that she prove this. And I was met with silence for a long time before she suddenly told me that the next time I came to her house, she would totally prove this. What, they got you on like Ancestry.com or something like that? <laughs> She's never gonna prove it. Some time passed before I went to her house next. I had forgotten all about this promise by this time. Amanda met me at the door, excited, and pulled me into the office. She asked if I remembered how she was a princess, <laughs> and rather ceremoniously presented me with a Christmas-themed gift box. Inside, she said seriously, was the crown of her kingdom, which she was passed down. Oh my god, uh, should you even be holding on to this? We should put this in a lockbox somewhere, right? At this point, OP says she was too old for make-believe but still young enough that, thanks to her serious tone, for just a moment, I suspended all my disbelief. I breathlessly opened the box and inside found a children's dress-up tiara. <laughs> it was made from plastic with those huge plastic, uh, gems and inelastic strap. Bro, this is sad. She could have just let it drop. <laughs> she went to the, the pick and grab and, and pulled out a tiara. She's like, Mom, I need this. My friends are all going to think I'm a liar if I don't have this. <laughs> I laughed, thinking it was a joke. One look at Amanda's face showed me that she thought I was going to believe this. And so I laughed even harder. <laughs> Uh, Amanda, in response, had a total meltdown, running, sobbing into the living room, throwing herself on the couch. When her mother came to comfort her, she desperately tried to get her mom to back up her story. This not working, she slammed into her room and wasn't seen until dinner time. <laughs> Dude, uh, you did this to yourself. I can't even feel bad. You're lying about stuff that don't need to be lied about. <laughs> let sleeping dogs lie. So at this point, let us fast forward five or six years. A nearby park was having an outdoor battle of the bands. Lots of high school garage groups. The under 21 crowd was representing. Lots of food being sold openly. Booze being drunk uh, fairly discreetly. I was there with my crew and Amanda was hanging around with us. She was, of course, being rather whiny about the whole experience, and we were just annoyed at her when things finally came to a head. Bro, what are you even whining about? This is your life. You only get one. Live it how you wanna. You don't wanna be here. Don't be here. One of my friends, Holly, was sitting at a table when up walks a high school hottie. All wide jinko jeans and spiked bleach tips. Yeah. A late 90s dreamboat. <laughs> Bro, uh, you got me real deep right now. <laughs> Holly was a shy girl, but this guy sits across the table from her and strikes up a conversation. Turns out he was from a nearby high school and recognized her from a track meet that they had both been at. Yeah, Holly, get your swerve on. <laughs> the two of them are hitting it off and the rest of us completely back off and just let them chat. Of course, not Amanda. 
Amanda didn't deal well with not being the center of attention, you see. And much like a toddler, if she didn't get any positive attention, well, then she would suffice with negative attention. So, occasionally acting quite weird was a normal thing for Amanda. Bro, this, this, this is not about you. <laughs> uh, why is she like this? I don't understand. I need to know more about her upbringing to really piece this together. She pulled a chair over to the end of the table and stood on it, then turned and sat on the table edge with her feet on the chair. This table was one of those temporary plastic banquet tables. <laughs> Probably 10 feet long, so this was, as you can imagine, quite wobbly. So next, she lays down on her back on the table with her knees steepled up. This, however, still didn't seem to garner much attention. So next, she started scooting herself down the table with her feet. <laughs> Still lying on her back, her shoulders bulldozing the drinks that sat on the table. <laughs> uh, there's no way, dude. This is far too much cringe. <laughs> what are you doing? Uh, oh, finally, she got down level with Holly and the hottie, her head and shoulders between them like a Thanksgiving turkey. Dude, just like throw an elbow into her nose or something. <laughs> Oops. <laughs> Not surprisingly, this killed Holly and Hottie's getting to know you conversation, as it is impossible to talk literally over the top of someone else and still act casual. Everyone looked rather upset at Amanda for this move, but no one really seemed to know how to stop it. Like I said, throw the elbow, flip the table over. There are myriad things you could do to prevent this. So I leaned over Amanda, staring down at her face and said, Hey, you remember the time you claimed you were royalty because of that pretty, pretty princess crown? <coughs> there were a few laughs and I launched into the whole story. Now suddenly Amanda was literally the centerpiece of both the table and the conversation. <laughs> Uh, be careful what you wish for, son. <laughs> this was not the attention she wanted, however. She rather suddenly sat up and slid down the table to the edge. Now, Amanda was not a large girl, but without the chair to stabilize her, her full weight was a bit much for that lightweight table. And suddenly the entire table flipped up on her, Drinks and snacks raining down on her head. <laughs> uh, and by this point, it was just a huge crowd laughing and pointing. <laughs> uh, it is karmic justice. Oh, ambrosia. Jesus. A furious and filthy Amanda fled the party and Holly and the hottie dated for a short period of time. <laughs> that is so beautiful, dude. It's everything that I could have wished for and more. Twitch chat says that she's probably grew up like being the center of attention or receiving no attention and yeah, there's basically no in between and I tend to agree. That's why I want to know what her family setup is like. I'm guessing she's a, a, a an only child, but I can't recall if that was mentioned in the first part or not. Regardless, big piece of karma, <laughs> and it is so delicious. You'd think that this would make her take a look at her life and reconsider some things, but it doesn't at all because there's like 15 more of these stories. So let's keep it rolling on into the next one all right now. Keeping up appearances with Amanda. Yeah, who else but? <laughs> I described a little of Amanda's background and tendencies in a comment yesterday and figured that I would expound upon that a little bit. I don't generally read the comments. I think I'm missing some good stuff down there sometimes. For the uninitiated, Amanda was a leg beard that I grew up with, who later reached full on double plus leg beard status during college. I mean, the signs were all there. <laughs> we should have all seen this coming. We went to a rather clicky school and people would self-describe themselves as preps 
or jocks, like something out of an 80s coming-of-age movie. We've all been media poisoned, haven't we? <laughs> this is terrible. Amanda saw this as the social ladder that she had to climb. Someday she would find the right thing that would make her totally popular. Okay, in my experience, Amanda, that, that thing is not lying. <laughs> Being a genuine person, and you could be totally popular. As if that's really the be all end all. Apparently, on that day, every one of the preppy popular people would wake up and rub their eyes and go, Amanda, oh wow, why didn't I think Amanda was cool before right now? Hey everyone, let's embrace Amanda as one of our own. And as Amanda was carried off on their shoulders, she would flip the bird to my social crowd. That's right, now she's graduated. This is actually a dream that we both share because, yeah, she's someone else's problem now. <laughs> because although we were the ones that tolerated Amanda's BS, the ones who good-naturedly forgave her tantrums and endless whining, she made no qualms that we weren't good enough for her. No, we were at best filler friends until she could be among her own people. And she openly admits this, and y'all just kind of take it on board? <laughs> Let's see how you like having no friends at all, as far as I'm concerned. God, I hate Amanda. She's so easy to hate! Because of this, Amanda was obsessed with appearance, both physical and social. To be honest, her mother had been the popular blonde girl in school, and had aged into the very definition of a is it weird for OP to say that? Feels a little weird. <laughs> she had a slightly younger sister who was drop dead gorgeous, friendly and intelligent. Meanwhile, Amanda was at best, uh, unusual looking. <laughs> With the right style, she could have made it work really well, but she made questionable choices that only made her look even more unusual. And thanks to her foul attitude, she became just downright unattractive. So she's not an only child. Well, that throws a wrench in my theory. Maybe the little sister gets all the attention. Maybe Amanda is trying to live up to the expectations set by her mother and her sister. There's just a whole lot of speculation that goes into this. <laughs> it's super hard to judge anything from a Reddit post, okay? But what has clearly been established is that Amanda, yeah, she ain't getting no attention. Cause I need attention! Anyway, here we get into some physical description of Amanda. As a kid, Amanda had rather bushy eyebrows and wore the thick early 90s kids plastic glasses paired with terrible 90s poofy hair. It was the same sort of picture that every girl my age looks back at and winces over. <laughs> Amanda, though, tried to rewrite history. At graduation, we were supposed to hang up a baby and a childhood photo. Amanda instead submitted pictures of some child model. <laughs> Gosh, she's just too much. This was a small town. We all knew what Amanda looked like as a kid because we all went to school with her. <laughs> <laughs> but she claimed that every one of us misremembered what she looked like as a child. <laughs> Despite her being in photos with us, and every class photo looking nothing like the girl in her supposed picture. <laughs> oh god, dude! Uh, what reason do you even have to lie about this? And, and the fact you think you're so much smarter than everybody else that you're gonna get away with it? And people are gonna buy into it. <laughs> I just can't. There's, there's so much to unpack. Obviously, the eyebrows are what had really bothered her. The late 90s, yeah, they were a terrible time for eyebrows. <laughs> With massive war crimes being committed to pluck all eyebrows down to pencil thin lines. Amanda took it a step further though and basically plucked away her entire arch, leaving these two spots on the inside. <laughs> if you ever see the two spots above the eyes of a Doberman, yeah, it's basically the same thing. 
what? What? She already had tiny eyes, and this just made her look terribly cross-eyed. Bad, yes, but worse was that she rarely maintained it. So half the time she had this like five o'clock shadow across her eyebrows. <laughs> With two commas left to represent all of her emotions. <laughs> uh, I don't know, man. This is so good. It's getting me today. This poor little girl. Why is she doing this? I feel bad about the appearance thing. And then she starts talking and I remember how much I dislike her. <laughs> uh, at some point... A rather popular girl came in with some super expensive, sparkly, and shiny lip gloss, which for some reason was instantly a thing, because 90s. <laughs> Amanda had to get some of that. She would literally carry it around in her hand, so everyone could see that she was using the really expensive stuff. You ever heard that saying about lipstick on a pig? Never mind. <laughs> mean uh, the main problem here was that Amanda's mouth wasn't really the feature that she should be accentuating she had a wide mouth and her lips were essentially the same width all the way across no Cupid's bow more like fish lips but on a human being say hello to my sleep paralysis demon <laughs> also inexplicably the lip gloss that she chose to wear was grape. It turned her lips a wet, grayish color, piling into her mouth corners with caked on bluish tinge. <laughs> Jesus, dude. Uh, that is a mess. You look like a dead person right now. Uh, we all tried to tell her, but she attributed this to our jealousy over her massively expensive lip gloss. Here's a hint. If several girls are telling you that your makeup choices make you look like you have slimy, necrotic mouth tubers instead of lips. Yeah, you're doing something wrong. <laughs> uh, she can't even be honest with other people. How's she ever going to be honest with herself? Otherwise, makeup was only worn on special occasions. She had foundation that she stole from another friend massively mismatched to her skin tone, and only worn in dabs on top of zits. <laughs> she also had a sparkly blue eyeshadow, which she would apply equally to the top and bottom lid. It's like a little girl got into mommy's makeup cabinet. This is... <laughs> Why are you doing this? Sometimes less is more, okay? Senior year, we attempted to take her to the makeup counter, and we had them do a whole new face for her. And when done, it was astounding. She was actually really pretty. And she hated it. <laughs> <laughs> That's hilarious. Amanda, just, just take the hint, please. Now, hanging out with her through mutual family events and marching bands, I knew that this girl, she could tuck away some food. We were teens. Who didn't chow down on pizza and junk food from time to time? I wish I still could. My metabolism just can't handle it no more. <laughs> but in school, where others could watch her, she didn't want anyone to see this. She's ashamed of her eating? That's like a childish trait too. My four-year-old hides under the table to eat cookies. But this woman's senior year? Yeah, you're 17. It's time to get it together. So Amanda's lunch went as follows. She would rush to be the first one to the cafeteria, get the salad bar, then come to sit at my table with my friends. She'd gulp down some food, trying to be finished before anyone actually saw her sitting with us. She'd take a moment to carefully arrange her tray. When we asked, she said that, uh, This was so that anyone who saw where she'd been sitting would see her tray and not get the wrong impression. Traces of lettuce would be carefully strewn about so that you could tell she had gotten the salad. Dude, this is way too much work. It must be so exhausting to be you and arrange your tray just so. <laughs> what the hell? Uh, uh, the iced tea container was placed at a perfect angle. 
the napkin, carefully dab dabbed on that lip gloss and then refolded and tucked halfway under the plate, with the lip print showing, of course. Food stylists take much time and attention, you see. Bro, what? Uh, I'm not even sure how to classify this. <laughs> uh, did anybody notice this at all? I guess OP did. Uh, at this point, Amanda would leave her tray with her book bag in the seat and spend the rest of lunch either stalking her current crush or lurking near the popular kids' table. She would only come back at the last moment to grab her tray and book bag. We, of course, frequently messed with her tray, leaving scattered candy wrappers on it, <laughs> smearing ice cream all around it, and drawing on the paper plate. She was always furious about that. <laughs> Uh, that's really funny though. Like OP and her friends, they're trying so hard to be good friends with Amanda. She doesn't like when they go out for makeup. She doesn't like when the friends razz her a little bit. Maybe she is just better off alone. Anywho, at some point, Amanda decided to diet. Again, normal high school girl stuff. Only, she had seized onto someone else's measurements as being 36, 22, 38. This was her goal. Those exact numbers. You, good luck, I guess. <laughs> Gonna need some surgery a high school student can't afford for some of those numbers. This, again, was the late 90s, so we were all wearing those low-rise hipster pants at the time. And for some reason, Amanda had it in her head that her waist was where her pants were. Her hip measurement was actually closer to the upper thigh. Her waist was maybe only an inch higher up. She would constantly bemoan how much weight she had to lose for her waist to be 22 inches. <laughs> yeah, you gotta break your pelvis and all this. It's too complicated. <laughs> Finally, I took her to the anatomy room and measured the skeleton to show her how unrealistic it was to think that she could lose weight to 22 inches around what is essentially the widest point of her pelvis. <laughs> she probably took this a bit too much to heart as she gained the freshman 100 after graduating. God, Amanda, you're just a mess. I mean, it, it was the 90s, okay? So you didn't know everything about everything. You didn't have a supercomputer in your pocket, but there were people that you could ask. Ask Jeeves, for instance. <laughs> uh, no, don't do that. It's a horrible search engine. But all I'm saying is there was a way to get the information if you were really intent on having it. And if you're going to set goals for yourself like that, maybe know what the hell it is you're talking about. Unless you like being disappointed, which I guess I like being disappointed because uh, I'm going to roll on into the next story and we're going to see what happens. So join me over there. Fall formal with Amanda. Oh boy, another leg beat at the dance. Somebody's going to end up crying in the bathroom. Mark it on your bingo cards already. <laughs> It's time for another story from the leg beard that I grew up with. The landlocked surfer. The lost royalty from some unknown plastic jeweled kingdom. The incomparable Amanda. Yay, round of applause. Smattering of indifference, whatever. <laughs> At some point in the past, our school had two dances in the fall. Fall formal and homecoming. Before I hit high school, these had basically been condensed into one massive formal. So we would have our homecoming game, elect our homecoming queen, and then it would be time for our fall formal. This was THE event. The finest event possible that could be hosted in a high school gymnasium. Only the best for our public schools, damn it. <laughs> Prom was only for seniors, and only half the school attended, but fall formal! Oh, you just didn't miss it! I actually have several stories involving fall formal and Amanda, including the one that I'm dying to tell, but I'm gonna save that one for a little bit later. Oh, do these get juicier as they progress? Please, yes. 
<laughs> the advantage to our big formal being in the fall was that we learned we could go out in the late spring and buy prom dresses when they were heavily discounted. That's big brain time right there. For us alternative preppy kids, it ended up being this odd sort of on we spend thrift chic. We would find the perfect dress, hide it away for six months under strict watch so that our looks would all be secret, sometimes dieting to fit in and sourcing the perfect accessories. Then we would show up at the dance and when complimented, we'd say, oh, this old thing, yeah. I figured I'd get it in case I went to fall formal. It was only $30, so really no big deal. <laughs> uh, what has really changed, honestly? So that spring, my mom was driving a load of my friends down to uh, raid the mall. And as my mom was Amanda's friend, she asked me to call and invite Amanda along. And I did so begrudgingly. Amanda had already started becoming that weirdo who you really don't want to invite anywhere. <laughs> yeah, uh, th we saw it. It's not going to get any better until it gets a whole lot worse. So we get there, all tucked into the back of my mom's minivan, and begin to pillage the mall. Amanda stops short at the first clearance rack. Sale dresses? They were used up and old. She made snide comments about each one that we tried on. After a store or two, she was at a fine grade wine, and everyone there was starting to get upset with her. Perhaps sensing the hostility, she said she'd go and sit with my mom at the food court. Yeah, go suck down seven or eight hot dogs on a stick. Hope that it fills the hole in your soul. <laughs> <laughs> we finished up shopping and found my mom in the food court, tucked away with a new book from Walden Books. She hadn't even seen Amanda. <laughs> a frantic search happened with no results. This was the days before cell phones. So we paged her and security started looking and a half hour passed when one of my friends finally spotted her. She was lying on a bench in the entryway to a department store, ignoring the pages overhead from the loudspeaker. I mean, who doesn't have a nap in the middle of the mall? Uh, every once in a while. Existing is a lot of work. <laughs> when we found Amanda, she tried to pull the Oh, so now you care about me routine right up until my mom came thundering up to the security kiosk. To say the least, my mother was furious with her. We might be teens, but mom had been entrusted with Amanda's safekeeping and she had taken her pouting to such an extreme that we thought something happened. Amanda got quiet real quick and stayed quiet the whole way home. Oh, Amanda, why well, you gotta ruin everything you touch, huh? <laughs> uh, jump forward to the fall. Formal is just around the corner, and Amanda, well, she still doesn't have a dress. <laughs> uh, with a week left to spare, she apparently went to her mother in a frantic mess. The exact details are unknown to me, but somehow Amanda talked her mother into handing over her credit card, working out a budget and catching a ride to the mall with someone. Fall formal rolls around and we're all hanging out when in walks Amanda. Oh God, it's gonna be over the top, isn't it? Everything Amanda does, has, is, is over the top. <laughs> But the gown that she had gotten in particular was a whole lot of dress, as OP says, with a lot of sheaths, and she stood out with poof tuli and sparkles. Her makeup was, as always, uh, not good. <laughs> and her hair, while professionally done, was just a Shirley Temple mass of curls. Still, even though she didn't look good, she looked happy and fairly confident. So yeah, good for her. That's what matters most is that you're happy and confident, right? So Amanda decided that for this event, she was gonna avoid my subpar social group, lurking around after more popular groups and dancing behind them while they ignored her completely. <laughs> oh God, dude. Uh, stop doing this to yourself, Amanda. I don't know why you keep hurting yourself. Your mother and I are, are concerned. <laughs> 
One aside I should mention was that Amanda never really learned to walk in heels. The best way I could describe it would be John Wayne just off the horse sort of gait, but in a puffy bubblegum pink skirt. <laughs> uh, howdy pilgrims. I reckon I'll mosey on over there and rustle me up some punch. <laughs> So a few days pass, and then one night, my mother got a phone call from Amanda's phone. She sounded furious and asked mom what I had spent on my formal dress. Mom told her, and there was a ton of angry voices on the other side of the line. I heard mom talking about the spring shopping trip. It turned out that when Amanda had her mother's credit card, she had decided to blow through the budget set by her mother several times over. <laughs> I mean, there was no supervision here. You just trust your kid with that? Where's personal responsibility fall into this? Her mother had only found this out when she went to use the card, and it was declined. <laughs> uh, Amanda had actually maxed out her parents' card on a gown and accessories. <laughs> Dude, we're talking thousands of dollars at that point. This was only made worse by the fact that Amanda could have gotten a cheap dress in the spring, but chose to be a brat about it. Ooh, I don't want discount dress. Why, it's discounted. I thought it was a weird choice in the moment, but to see the fallout that it caused? Oh, God. <laughs> Amanda's mother was an ER nurse, a no-nonsense woman. I wouldn't have ever crossed her. While they weren't poor, this did basically blow the family budget for quite some time. Honestly, I'm not saying that you should drown your kids in the bathtub over a few thousand dollars, but I, I, I probably would consider it really seriously. <laughs> <laughs> I've never heard anyone as furious as Amanda's mother was. Amanda was grounded for months on end, not allowed to do anything that wasn't tied to school. Furthermore, she was completely cut off from any money from her parents for the rest of high school. They would purchase things for school, but there would be no cash unless Amanda got a job and earned it herself. That's a fair and balanced response. Much better response than the bathtub. Good job, guys. That's A-plus parenting. <laughs> for some reason, Amanda just didn't believe it. I'll write up a few more stories that go into more detail, but... Amanda not getting that she now had to earn her way was basically the basis of the rest of Amanda's high school experience. But that is a story that will have to be told at another time. Now there are some questions floating around whether, you know, OP is actually bullying Amanda or if Amanda deserves any of this treatment. In my opinion, it seems like everybody's bullying everybody else, like nobody's really following the social contract, which makes it 100% okay. This is an OP that fights back against their beard tormentor, and isn't that what the comments section said they wanted? Well, here it is, and now it's bullying? I don't understand, y'all. At least I can rest assured knowing that this story is super enjoyable, relatively innocent as far as hijinks and shenanigans go, but it still manages to bring the cringe. Just a girl sliding down a banquet table, knocking all the drinks off like... <laughs> Who could make this up? They're all band kids. I don't know why it always has to be all the band kids. Just be normal, please. Locked in with Amanda. Oh, a fate worse than death, I'm pretty sure. <laughs> Another story from Amanda, the leg beard I grew up with. And if you missed the previous parts, hey, we got a playlist in the description for you. The landlocked surfer, the secret princess, and owner of the most expensive formal gown in the entire high school. Yeah, she basically bankrupted her family with that, remember? Oh, what a shenanigan. <laughs> Our freshman year, long before the formal gown incident, the marching band had a lock-in. Like I said, it's always them band kids. If you didn't know, your parents would drop off a bunch of the minors and you'd have a sort of all-night party. Ours took place the next town over in their civic center. I don't know what set Amanda off, but she was a sulky, pouty mess before long. 
while the rest of us were playing games or reading or napping, Amanda was milling about from room to room, complaining about the entire thing. I mean, I'd tell her to, to go home, but yeah, you're basically locked in. That's the whole idea. <laughs> At least try to have a good time. Before long, she started complaining to the chaperones, asking to be let out for a breath of fresh air. She claimed she was feeling sick in a way that she couldn't quite describe, which only fresh air could fix. Stick your head out the window. <laughs> she didn't want him to call her parents and go home. She just wanted some fresh air. Just give Amanda a cigarette. She'll be right as rain. No, don't do that. <laughs> she was set up miserably by a cracked window next to a similarly miserable looking chaperone before very long. This break not creating the result she wanted, she rejoined us in the game room, where she sulked in the corner, and everyone ignored her. As you should. Giving her attention is not gonna fix this. <laughs> Next, she started milling around the people playing foosball, getting in their way, whining about having to be at the lock-in and, and how miserable it was. They offered to let her play in. She decried foosball as stupid, but kept sort of getting in their way and trying to get anyone to agree with her that the whole thing was dumb and horrible. Then why are you here? <laughs> I don't understand. Finally, she suddenly sprawled herself across the table, snapping one of the wooden foosball figures in the process. Great, now nobody could play. Thank you so much. Everyone was instantly angry at her, but that apparently wasn't the response that she wanted. She stalked off to the next room to sulk some more. Bro, what is wrong with- how, how do you become such a miserable human being? <laughs> I bet she does this at her house too. Just perpetual sad girl hours so she can be not like other girls, you see. A bit of time passes when suddenly the alarm for the building goes off. Oh my god. <laughs> the chaperones herd us onto the basketball court, and you can quickly figure out that it was the back kitchen fire door being opened that set off the alarm. There was a quick head count, and you can guess who was missing. <laughs> what an idiot. <laughs> uh, Amanda's parents were called. Her dad arrived first, her brother and sister in the back seat. They were bleary-eyed and pajamaed. Her dad quickly went from concerned to downright pissed when he realized what it was that Amanda had done. Yeah, I'm pretty sure they can file charges against you for pulling a fire alarm or something. But they probably didn't. Amanda gets away with everything. That's why she keeps acting this way. We all had to sit on the floor in a cluster watched by one chaperone while the rest searched outside for her. A cop was called, and the sight of the cop car was enough to scare Amanda back out of hiding. <laughs> uh, she'd been across the street, hiding out in the playground. I just don't understand! Why are you like this? What happened? Tears streaming down, she ran back across the street, she was brought into the Civic Center, and we watched as she sobbed and clung to her sister. Between sobs, she explained that she had only run away as a joke because everyone was being stupid. She was afraid that she would have to pay for the foosball table, and of course she wanted fresh air, and they wouldn't let her get it, and she was sick, and they just wouldn't let her go home. Bro, everybody wants you to go home at this point, I'm pretty sure. I mean, she might have ruined the entire night in the moment, but it also created some powerful memories and some powerful cringe. <laughs> the cop was leaving as her mom pulled up, still in her scrubs, a brief talk, and she looked both embarrassed as hell and ready to rip Amanda's head off. Amanda's tears started anew, and she left doing the sort of sob scream that normally only toddlers do. God damn, dude. I'm not saying you should hit your kids. I'm not saying it. <laughs> I just think it really loud in this moment. After this, we were kept on the basketball court for the rest of the night. The party basically over. 
They rolled out a TV and played terrible family movies and found some random board games like Checkers with half of the pieces missing. Amanda seemed surprised when everyone was angry at her the next day and didn't want to hear about how she was grounded. She just really can't see outside of herself. Run away, hide at the park, and then be like, LOL, I was only pretending to be dumb, you guys. You all got trolled. <laughs> uh, the only person trolled here is you. Your life has become the biggest joke, Amanda. At least we're able to, to reap some of that delicious, deep-seated cringe from it. But yeah, I still got a lot of questions. Why the hell is she this way? I guess some people are just who they are. No matter how unfortunate that might be. Let's get into another Amanda story and see how that goes uh, right now. Amanda is cut off. From what? Oxygen? <laughs> Good! I hope so. She's a lot easier to deal with when she's passed out. I'll tell one or two more tales from high school and then we'll cut to the post high school age. Basically, that's when Amanda found the internet and things went downhill really, really fast, as they tend to do on the internet. <laughs> Which, uh, yeah, I guess that's the part that everyone wants to hear about. So as I said before, Amanda had betrayed her parents' trust and maxed out their credit card. Part of her punishment was that they wouldn't give her any money afterwards for anything. Amanda basically spent the rest of high school not believing that this was true. Especially for our junior year fall formal, which I'll tell you guys about in the next story. Amanda really and truly believed that she was getting a brand new car for her 16th birthday. Now Amanda, we know you're very poor and can barely afford food. That's why we bought you this brand new Porsche! Oh man! Oh my god! Amanda's parents were firm in telling her that it was not gonna happen. But she really thought that they were just trying to throw her off. <laughs> uh, she watched too much MTV. My super sweet 16 and all this stuff. First of all, we ain't rich. And second of all, if we were, you, you still don't deserve it. Amanda would clip out pictures of cars and reviews from Consumer Reports and leave them on her dad's desk. Very subtle. <laughs> when her birthday came and went with no car, Amanda threatened to run away from home. Yeah, and her parents are like Willy Wonka. Stop, don't, come back. <laughs> After her 16th birthday, we had to hear constantly how her father kept coaxing her to go out and get a job at the little convenience store down the street. Finally, I pointed out that she was the only one of us without a job, but she would look at me shocked and give us reasons why, obviously, she couldn't be expected to work a part-time job. Yeah, a secret princess can't be expected to work a part-time job. Come on, OP. <laughs> Summer of that year, the band went for an overnight trip. Yeah, we just saw how that one went. <laughs> we had plenty of opportunities to do fundraising for months beforehand, but Amanda turned her nose up at all of these opportunities. She particularly complained that they expected her to sell candy bars to a bunch of fat people. <laughs> I knew it meant a lot for her to go on the trip, so as a last ditch effort, I convinced her to come along to the car wash. Everyone who participated got an equal share of the money that we raised, and it was usually enough to cover about half the cost of the trip. That said, yeah, it was hard work. Working at the car wash, yeah. <laughs> and we would wash something like 120 cars in a day. That's impressive. These high school kids, they hustling. Ignore what I said about the band kids. They getting it in. Oh, and this one time at band camp. So we would have four spots to wash cars with a few kids assigned to each spot. Oh, that's big brain time. Of course, the morning, they only trickled in and we were just using one spot. Amanda gave up after only a car or two. She complained that we were throwing bubbles and squirting water and that she was getting wet. Please never say that again, Amanda. <laughs> then she stopped off and sat on the curb. Bro, how is one human being this, this determined to fail at everything? 
I'm amazed. <laughs> the mid-morning rush hit, and then we were forced to wash four cars all at once. We started spraying down the other cars when Amanda screamed. Turns out, even though she was 50 feet away, the runoff from the spray was going downhill to where she was laying down, and she was soaked. That's what you get for laying in the gutter. Honestly, that's where she belongs, though. That's where we put trash. <laughs> there were tears, complaints to the adults, and she went even further away. Finally, the band director told her that if she didn't participate, then she wasn't going to get any credit. For the rest of the day, she would reluctantly dab her sponge against the cars, rolling her eyes and sighing. God, I hate her! <laughs> Everything I said nice in the last episode, I take it back! Then her complaints started, of course, as if they ever stopped. She pointed out how they have machines to do this, and we should just hire some stupid immigrants for the job, not straight A students like herself. Oh god, she is just despicable! Every line she says! Oh. Someone finally told her that she just needed to be quiet for the rest of the time. I don't think she knows how to, OP. <laughs> Walmart matched half of what we brought in, but they'd only count the $5 per car amount. We also had a jar out marked for tips, which both the people getting their cars done and just folks going to shop would drop money into. The tip jar had, by far, more money. Is Amanda going to steal the tip jar? Please, please, please don't. <laughs> Toward the end of the day, Amanda noticed this and started eyeballing the large jar full of bills. Oh my god, she is. <laughs> we noticed that she was looking at it. Amanda was long since known to be a thief, so we were keeping a close eye on her. Finally, she turned towards everyone working and said, do we have to put this toward the trip? Or would it be okay if one of us just took it? <laughs> one of us? Gee, I wonder who? Who do you nominate, Amanda? <laughs> uh, no, Amanda. That's for the trip. And of course, she continued pouting. She did end up going on the trip, but it was because she guilted her grandmother into paying out the balance. Oh, it's just, it's just a lot to deal with today, you know? At some point, she's going to meet the consequences of her own actions, and I'm so looking forward to that day when Granny isn't there to bail you out. One of the things about that summer was that I inexplicably had spent the winter growing, a really late growth spurt for a girl. Suddenly, I was three inches taller, suddenly had a butt, and my bra size had increased. That spring, I found that I basically had no summer clothes that fit well. Sounds to me like it's time for a shopping spree. That's the best part. <laughs> My mom took me shopping, high five, and we picked up some staple pieces. Meanwhile, I had my first job, and it started to drive to the city on my off days. I took up thrift shopping when I went, and I still do it. Man, thrift shops used to be lit as hell until Macklemore made a song about it and then they realized they could make a bunch of money off it. It's unfortunate. I'll never buy 50 cent pants again and it breaks my heart. <laughs> Amanda was in a hotel room with two other girls. When she saw that I had new clothes, keeping in mind that this was a two day trip, so a total of three outfits, she threw a fit. That night, she dumped my suitcase on the balcony. Bro, that, that's, that's a fight right there. <laughs> I'm not gonna let that happen. And indeed, it ended up with a huge fight between us, and Amanda had to go and stay in a chaperone's room. We weren't on speaking terms for a while after this, which sucked because our families were still getting together regularly. It also meant that she wasn't hanging out with my friends as much anymore, as I had been her main advocate. That's probably why she felt that she could do this to you and get away with it, OP. And I'm glad that you didn't let her get away with it. Next time I'll tell of the fall formal disaster, when Amanda basically screwed over the last of her goodwill amongst my friends, and then we'll move on to the post high school years. Maybe a few stories of the weirdness of her childhood. Honestly, this is probably like one of the worst Amanda stories that we've gotten yet. <laughs> The other stories, I'm like, yeah, it's cringe, but she's not, like, 
endlessly hateable, and now I'm like, oh, okay, I see who you really are deep down, and there's no saving you. So even when we get to the child stories, I will unmercifully mock a child. I'm completely okay with that, especially if that child grows up to be Amanda, right? Honestly, I'll probably just do the fall formal story and then we'll be done for the day. I don't know. We'll see how long it is. A lot of these stories are pretty short. So let's roll on through and see how it goes. Amanda's date for fall formal. Oh, that poor unfortunate guy. <laughs> he did it on a bet or something, right? To recap, Amanda and I had a huge falling out when she dumped my clothing all over the balcony of a hotel. Our shared social group took my side, for obvious reasons, and for a few months, Amanda was basically shunned. It should have been forever. <laughs> Our families got together a few times over the summer, but I wouldn't even look at her because I was still so angry. Yeah, there's no reason for her to do stuff like that. I don't... God, why are you this way? That's the question I endlessly ask myself in this saga. The last few weeks before school started, we were at marching band practice, though. Four days a week, rehearsing music in the field show. Amanda and I were in the same section, so suddenly we had to be in close proximity and work together. I got over myself, and while we definitely weren't buddy-buddy anymore, we weren't entirely antagonistic either. And I think what OP means to say by that is that OP wasn't being antagonistic. Amanda, that's just in her nature, okay? <laughs> that's basically all that she does is antagonize everybody around her. At some point, she mentioned that over the summer, while none of us were talking to each other, she had joined the soccer club at her mom's request. I was shocked. It was such a healthy move on her part to branch out and try new things. I'm pretty sure she only did it for a boy. <laughs> From what we know about Amanda, yeah, 90% sure that's the reason. And then, a week or so before school started, she told us that she was dating a guy from soccer club, Fred. Called it. <laughs> now, Amanda's history of stalking as the basis of a relationship was well established, so frankly, none of us really believed her. Then, he picked her up from band practice. I was gobsmacked. Fred was fairly normal, pretty popular, a senior with his own car. There were general apologies for not believing her. We all thought that maybe, just maybe, Amanda had really changed. <laughs> uh, that's a good joke. She started to rather proudly and pointedly plan her fall formal for the year with her new prize date. And of course she would need the dress, a gown, to turn every head towards her in her Cinderella moment. She went to her mom with her big plans and was completely shocked when she was turned down. Remember, this is only one year after Amanda had maxed out her parents' credit card buying the previous year's dress, but to Amanda, her spending restriction was contingent somehow on her being single. Well, now that she had a boyfriend, uh, she thought it would be a different story. <laughs> Just wear the same dress. You paid so much for it. Your parents probably still trying to pay down that credit card debt. So yeah, it's time to recycle the dress. Her parents lined up Amanda with a job. With more than two months before the formal, she could save up. But no, she was still above working and refused to go to the interview. This is just self-sabotage is what this is, right? There's something deeply dysfunctional about Amanda within her brain, and I don't know how to fix it. Frankly, she seemed to believe that her parents were bluffing. Somehow, before formal, they would cave and buy her her dream dress. All this information delivered through Amanda was kind of funny in a really sad sort of way. <laughs> I mean around and find out, you know? And so she will. School starts and we notice something odd. Normally, kids dating in class would be holding hands in the hall or get in trouble for kissing or, well, interacting in some sort of way. But Amanda and Fred never seem to be together. 
Some of this could be attributed to just not being in the same grade, but even in times when they were in the same place, Amanda would be five to ten feet away from Fred, smiling, but not interacting. Basically almost the same thing she did when she was stalking other dudes. Furthermore, there were rumors that Fred was dating another girl, Heather. So she lied about this too? I am shocked. Shocked. Well, not that shocked. I had known Amanda since we were in kindergarten, and I had grown up with her. I was concerned, so I basically pulled her aside and asked her what was up. Fred, she said, I didn't want anyone to know they were together yet. He said, fall formal would be their reveal as a couple. Until then, she wasn't supposed to say anything about their relationship, and he didn't want to be seen with her. But things were totally great when they were alone. I'm not buying it. I'm not buying any of this. Even as a teen, this struck me as wrong. And I confided in our English teacher. She was concerned too and had a talk with Amanda. Afterwards, Amanda was furious that I had talked to an adult about her relationship. She became just horrible toward me and some of our friends. We were jealous because she had a boyfriend and they didn't. While we showed up in our cheap dresses and were alone, she was going to be living her dream with her awesome senior boyfriend. Yeah, you get the idea. I don't know, man. This is just delusion beyond delusion. <laughs> uh, you're even believing your own lies at this point, Amanda. You need to sit down with a therapist. Stop it. Get some help. Suddenly, it was the week before the formal, and Amanda was still without a dress, her parents having stood firm on their spending diet. You see, in a lot of neckbeard and legbeard stories, you can blame the parents, but it seems to me like Amanda's parents are doing the best that they can and Amanda really is just who she is, for whatever reason. I don't know how to cope with all this. <laughs> Amanda even called my mother, begging her to talk Amanda's parents into relinquishing their rule. She hung up in disgust when my mom recommended that she wear last year's dress again. Yeah, why wouldn't you? You spent so much money on it. I just don't, I just can't. <laughs> we started offering her our old formal dresses, but she turned those down as well. If she was gonna wear a used gown, it was going to be the most talked about gown from the previous year. So she called a senior named Kelly and begged her for her old formal dress. Kelly had actually sewn her own dress all four years of high school. Damn, Kelly, pretty lit, get it in. <laughs> The previous year's dress had been a particular knockout. It was made from a shimmery gold material, high neck with open shoulders, and it had a mermaid bottom. Kelly was a tall girl with amazing curves, and of course, it was tailored within an inch of its life, so it looked like she had Jessica Rabbit proportions. Again, Kelly, get it in. <laughs> Amanda might have had the most expensive dress, but Kelly's dress was the one that people talked about. It was like straight off of the red carpet. Amanda must have thought that wearing that dress would make everyone talk about her. She just, Amanda wants to be something so bad, but she's never gonna put in the work. It's pathetic. <laughs> Come on. Do you understand why people are talking about that dress? It's probably not just the dress, whatever. The day of the formal comes around and Amanda shows up fashionably late. We were all chilling outside the gym and she comes stalking up to us. While technically she was wearing the dress, that dress did not work on Amanda in the least. Kelly was at least six inches taller than Amanda and had worn heels. Amanda had on flats, so the dress sort of puddled around her feet like a toddler playing dress up. <laughs> uh, oh, it's sad. The height difference meant that the dress bunched up so that her hips were in place, creating a weird tuck and like this pooch that hung out over her stomach. Jesus, you didn't even get it refitted? <laughs> uh, she's so out of her depth. I, I don't know what's going on. Amanda first complained that she had to do her own hair. 
This garnered little sympathy, as the rest of us had done the same. So with a smirk, she asked, If anyone had seen her boyfriend! None of us had. Amanda flounced off to find him, saying that she would see us around. A few moments later, one of our friends comes running out of the gym and tells us that something's up. I walk in and record scratch, rip, there's Fred practically climbing down the throat of Heather. Oh no, anyway. <laughs> standing there, shell-shocked, is Amanda. Heartbroken doesn't even begin to describe the expression on her face. I just don't get it. How did she talk herself into believing that they were a thing? She really does have no grip on reality. A few of us who were friends with her swept into action, pulling her away from the crowd. No one deserved that sort of heartbreak to be played out in front of the whole school. We wanted to get her somewhere private. Someone broke into one of the practice rooms by the band room, and we settled her in where she started to sob. We got her a cup of punch and some tissues and just let her break down. There were five or six of us in there telling her that we were so sorry, that he was a jerk, and that she didn't deserve all that. Bro, I don't think Fred's a jerk. People are just saying this to placate Amanda, right? <laughs> Fred's sort of the innocent victim in this endless delusion. As Amanda calmed down, we basically said that we would help her out however she wanted. We suggested just hiding out there for a while and that someone could stay there with her or just guard the room so she could be alone. Someone said that we'd leave instead. Go to the movies in our formal wear. Someone else said that we should just ignore him and go out and have a blast dancing as a group because, you know, screw that guy! These friends are so much better than anything that Amanda deserves, you know? Even if Fred has no idea what's going on, probably won't pay attention to anyone dancing in that group. At least they are trying to make Amanda feel a little bit better, whether she actually deserves that or not. Amanda looked around the room at the people helping her and giving suggestions and said, No! No! Screw you all! I want nothing to do with any of you for the rest of the night! You're all losers! And then she flounced back to the gym. Bro, let her drown. <laughs> uh, this is so ludicrous. There's nothing for it. Not a damn thing to fix it and good. You really want to be that miserable? Then go. Go, Amanda, and wallow. <laughs> uh, just wallow in your self-pity. After a shell-shocked moment, uh, we sort of shrugged it off and forgot about her. We made our way back to the gym and took pictures and danced and had fun. It was impossible to ignore the antics of Amanda, even if we weren't interacting with her, however. First, she was following around Fred and Heather. They would slow dance and she would stay behind Heather, rotating with them. <laughs> uh, you're so weird. You're such a weird little girl. I don't know where you get this. The whole time she was glaring at Fred, her face still snotty and red from crying. That failed as Fred simply occupied himself groping Heather. Is he complicit? He has to notice. Maybe he thinks that that's just some weird girl that he drove home one time. I don't really know where to place him, but apparently OP doesn't either, so moving on. At some point in the night, Heather and Fred sat down on some chairs to the side of the bleachers, and Amanda sat on the bleachers where she would be staring over them. <laughs> After a while, she leaned back across two rows, arms crossed across her chest. Then she sort of hitched her skirt up to her knees and propped her feet up on the handrail around the bottom of the bleachers, knees shoulder width apart, and bent, chin tucked, staring down her chest at them. It must have been the least attractive pose that a human being could ever take. <laughs> like being hitched into a sling for a pelvic exam and being really grumpy about it. I mean, does she think she's being like a seductress or something, showing her panties to the whole gym? <laughs> I'm really confused. Finally, she planted herself in the foyer by the doors, sprawled on the ground, so everyone leaving had to pretty much step over her in order to leave. <laughs> that is so much, man. <laughs>
<laughs> Moments like these, I really do miss the high drama of high school, right? <laughs> high school is such a serious thing. These problems matter. <laughs> <laughs> I can always tell more high school stories, but uh, it seems like people want me to jump into when she went full leg beard, so the chronology is about to jump forward a bit in the next episode. Bro, I really don't think that Fred knew what Amanda was on about, you know? He seemed completely unapologetic about the whole situation, and while granted some high school dudes can be like that, a lot of times they, they also feel the need to make excuses for themselves. Fred did not. <laughs> I'm pretty sure he doesn't know Amanda exists at all. She's just throwing a little fit and making everything really awkward and um, I guess I'd expect nothing less from Amanda, honestly. I am excited to get into the, the full leg beard adulting stories. Or at least adulting as much as you can uh, during your suspended adolescence. <laughs> but it's gonna devolve in the next part, I'm pretty sure. They grow up so fast! Uh, physically, I mean. Mentally, she's, uh... Whew. Something. Amanda goes to college. Surprised she got in, honestly. <laughs> as I said, I'm jumping forward in the narrative here, as the consensus seems to be to see her in her full beardy glory. If you want a bit of the backstory, however, there is a link to many other Amanda stories uh, in a playlist in the description. So suffice it to say that Amanda spent her senior year alienating people and destroying both public and private property. <laughs> Wonderful. Summer before college was pretty damn eventful too. If there's enough interest and I have the time, I will type that up at some point. So we had both headed out to college. I went to Penn State, main campus, and Amanda went to a smaller liberal arts college. Now, it might seem weird to the younger generation, but this was the first time that we had the real internet. Oh, internet. What a revelation. <laughs> I had dial-up with a parental time restriction set to 30 minutes a day. Amanda didn't even have a computer throughout high school. 30 minutes a day is madness. How am I supposed to feed my Neopets? <laughs> to suddenly be at college where there was a constant internet connection 24 seven in your room was, well, a culture change. And the world would never be the same, for better or for worse. <laughs> All of my high school friendships were suddenly kept up through AIM. This was pre-popularity of MySpace and Facebook. I had Amanda's AIM, and once in a blue moon we would exchange, Hey, how are ya? Good, okay, sentences, or comment on something that happened in our hometown with people that we both knew, but honestly we were barely in contact. Sounds like a welcome relief, all things considered. That spring, I did need to go home over one of those weekends. For some reason, I'm thinking it was Easter, but I might be wrong there. Freshmen were not allowed to have cars on campus, but I knew an upperclassman, Jamie, who was going home that weekend, and while Jamie lived fairly far from me, she would be driving within a half hour of my hometown, and so we arranged for her to drop me off where my parents could pick me up a bit easier. Now that's some feel-good teamwork, isn't it? The plan was that we would actually leave early Thursday afternoon after classes. Jamie had no Friday classes, and mine was a symposium class that I could easily get the notes for. We would then drive to her brother's college, spend the night as he had a morning exam, and then we would leave as soon as he was done. It turned out that her brother went to the same liberal arts college where Amanda went, so I contacted her to see if she wanted a ride as well. She said no, but also said that we should meet up and hang out while I was there. So far, so normal, I guess. Yeah, all that's about to change. Why would you agree in the first place? I guess we were friends at one point and we're hanging on to that for some reason. <laughs> Thursday, we pull into campus and find parking. Jamie's brother was in class for another hour, so I said we should find Amanda and hang out with her first. Oh no, now you pulling Jamie into this? <laughs> she ain't gonna give you no more rides after this. It was a small campus and we found Amanda's dorm pretty quickly. I buzzed her room, and a voice came on and said, Hello! 
I cracked a joke about being from the High School Alumni Association. There was a silence, and then a voice, sounding confused, said, Ah, hold on! I looked at Jamie and said that I hoped that that was Amanda and not her roommate. Next thing you know, there's a figure at the door, and I laugh. The door opens, and I say we're looking for Amanda and start apologizing. Then the figure shifts, and I recognize that body language. Oh, she looked different now. Probably not exactly what we would call a glow-up, though. <laughs> I had known Amanda since we were five. Our parents would frequently get together for dinners every summer. We went to an amusement park together. I had gone to school with her. I had done marching band with her. If you had told me that I wouldn't recognize her, I would have laughed in your face. It wasn't that she had just gained weight. There had always been a fussy side to Amanda. Even if she didn't dress or style herself well, she always had work to keep up her appearance. However tragic that might be, <laughs> the figure in front of me was sloppy, wearing PJ bottoms that literally had mud on them, a huge t-shirt, she had cut and dyed her hair, while before it was usually pulled into a tight ponytail, it was cut short and flat around her ears, and it was a dark, flat brown. It looked like she hadn't washed her hair in quite a while. Gross, dude. <laughs> I'm pretty sure this is only the beginning of the, the downward spiral, however. I sort of stated and then joked that I didn't recognize her, uh, because of the haircut. She just sort of shrugged it off. I introduced Jamie and she just sort of nodded, then turned and started back to her dorm. She literally hadn't said a single full word. I was starting to wonder if she was angry at me for some reason. She's angry at the world, OP. <laughs> Don't take that personally. Amanda's dorm was messy. Overflowing trash can, overflowing laundry basket. Again, this was shocking for a girl who was previously so fussy. As soon as we got inside, she sat down in front of her desktop and just started clicking, totally ignoring us. <laughs> Awkward. Jamie and I sat on her bed, idly trying to engage her in conversation. In retrospect, the walls were covered in printouts of anime-style drawings. It wasn't something that I knew that Amanda was involved with. Hell, I don't even think the knowledge of anime existed in our town until the mid-2000s, and I sort of thought that those cutouts must be her roommates. However, over the next few years, this would be proven completely wrong. I'm kind of curious as to which animes, but she'd probably be like, Ah, they're pretty obscure. You haven't heard of any of them. <laughs> okay, then. I wasn't that interested anyways. It was getting towards the time that Jamie's brother was getting out of class, and he had said he would meet us at the student center. I invite Amanda along, saying she could show us the campus as we go. She reluctantly agrees and walks out in the same PJs that she was in before. She just don't give a damn, huh? Completely given up. Sort of sad, but then again, it's Amanda, so... <laughs> we get outside, and Amanda points out the building directly across from her dorm. It was the main building for her major. That's where all her classes were. There was a small convenience store downstairs, which served subs, and that was where she got all of her food. Gosh, she really likes them sandwiches, huh? <laughs> we were walking across campus when Jamie points out that we're headed toward the visitor parking lot. She hadn't seen the student center on the way in, so Amanda stops, looks around, and changes course. We walk a bit further. She finds a map of campus and changes course a third time. <laughs> the campus wasn't that big. A half a dozen dorms, maybe ten classroom buildings, but she was totally lost. Jesus Christ, Amanda. You haven't ever been outside your dorm room before? What the hell? Finally, we get to the student center. Amanda's looking around like she hasn't seen it before, ever. I press her, and it turns out that she hadn't been there all year. Not since orientation. <laughs> we met up with Jamie and one of his friends and got some dinner. That friend is sorta hitting on me in a skeevy sort of way all the way through dinner. He mentions having the same major as Amanda, and I try to get them to talk about classwork. Amanda, however, is downright nasty towards him saying that the major related social club that he is a member of is a bunch of phonies and a-holes. I mean, he's a skeevy dude, that might be true or not. But considering all that we know about Amanda, yeah, they're probably just putting out the same energy that she was putting out. 
Anyways, Jamie's brother and his friend are pointing out campus stuff through the window. Just social talk, really, but it's a lot of school pride type of attitude. Amanda's just scoffing and rolling her eyes at everything they say. She starts talking about how she could have gone to an Ivy League school with her grades, and that she knows more than any of her professors. Finally, we just decide to eat in silence. <laughs> Uh, advisable. I don't know why she's here to begin with. Trying to reconnect with old quote-unquote friends, but yeah, just let that bridge stay burnt, honestly. There's no way that you're gonna force this. There was a small arcade downstairs, and we all decided to stop in and play some air hockey. Sweet! <laughs> I'm leaning over when the brother's friend comes up behind me and starts sort of grinding on me. Ew! This school is a hell pit. Watch out for the brother, too. Birds of a feather and whatnot. I scoot around the table and end up sitting next to Amanda. We're talking out our sleeping arrangements, and Jamie's brother says that he only has room for Jamie. The friend sort of jumps in and says, I could sleep in his room. I say, uh, I'd rather stay with Amanda and just invite myself over to her place. You definitely stuck between a rock and a hard place there. Oh! Giggity goo! <laughs> I get back to the dorm, and it turns out that she hadn't picked up the social cue of why I had invited myself over, so I filled her in. She was righteously upset as well, and started ranting about the members of his social club and what jerks they were. It was sort of a rebonding moment for me and my childhood friend. It might actually be kind of heartwarming if you didn't know already that inevitably it goes off the rails. <laughs> I asked her about why she hadn't ever been to the student center. It turned out that she literally didn't go further than her dorm or that one classroom building. Her entire life was reduced to a 25-foot walk or browsing the internet. She didn't have any friends at college. Yeah, them college kids ain't gonna put up with the same stuff that the high school kids did. We're reforming friend groups, and unfortunately, Amanda is learning a hard lesson about not getting in where you fit in, you know? The whole 25-foot walk thing is also probably why she gained some weight. Come on, take a walk, it's good for you. Amanda then went back to silently browsing the web again. Gotta feed them Neopets. <laughs> then at some point she asked if I wanted to see some of her sketches. Sure. I was feeling quite close to Amanda in that moment, and drawing was a new hobby of hers that I hadn't heard about, and she handed me a drawing. I count this as the last moment of a lot of my innocence. <laughs> <laughs> uh, oh no, it was a badly proportioned picture of two half-nude people kissing. Kissing or trying to swallow each other's heads? I'm not sure if Amanda knows the difference. <laughs> I really hadn't been exposed to too much at that point in my life as far as the anime subcultures, so I balked. Struggling for something to say, I asked if those were two girls. <laughs> <laughs> she snatched the picture back and said, It was two guys! Obviously, she wasn't happy with my response, so she continued to browse the web long into the night, not speaking to me again. I mean, you tried, OP. You had a 50-50 shot, you know? This is why you gotta say something vague, like, Oh, nice line work. I don't even know what that means, but it, I just think people like to hear it. <laughs> While I was back in our hometown, we also bumped into Amanda's mom, and I expressed my concern to her. Amanda wasn't socializing, wasn't bathing, wasn't getting out. I was worried that she was depressed. It turned out that Amanda had only been home once, and that was for Christmas. I later heard from Amanda that her parents were forcing her to go to therapy as a contingent on them continuing to pay for college. And she was furious about it, but I also felt that that was for the best, and this is where things started to get really weird. Oh, we're not in the really weird part already? <laughs> oh boy! <laughs> I, I definitely do recognize the signs of depression as well. But how you feel truly is something that's always in your control. Sometimes you gotta fake it till you make it, you know? I would impart that advice to Amanda, but I know she wouldn't listen anyways, so I'm gonna save my breath and we'll get on into the next story. Amanda Versus the world. Yeah, they're all out to get you. <laughs> if you're just joining us, 
This is the tale of a girl I grew up with who went to college and truly embraced the beard. Hate to see it, hate to see it. In my last tale, I had gone to visit her for a day and was really disturbed by her complete change in personality over the course of just a semester and a half. I was really concerned and worried about her. This was a girl that I knew all my life and I felt that I was watching her trend downhill. I basically decided to make a point to contact her daily through AIM. I figured that even a hundred miles away, maybe I could be some help to her. With her extreme internet usage, this was probably the best way to keep in contact with her, and we spent a ton of time talking over the months before summer vacation. I think she truly started to feel really close to me during that time, and she would vent a lot. Yeah, Amanda's always been a bit of a complainer, hasn't she? And while it is good to extend a, a social support network to her, a lot of the work that needs to be done in fixing Amanda needs to be done by Amanda and her therapist. I would not take all of this on, but you know, props to OP for, for being willing to. At some point, I asked why she had withdrawn so much. All these stories came through the haze of Amanda spin, but I did get the general gist of things. Apparently, through freshman orientation, she had pulled some of her attention-getting stunts. Her version had that people were being so mean and all she did was sit on the stage, etc. Then she attempted to rush the popular rich girl sorority, of course, and they didn't take her bid. I'm guessing that she pulled her normal routines and they just decided that they wanted none of it. This had turned her against the whole school and everyone in it, so she refused to go out and do anything as a sort of rebellion. Bro, that is the smallest victory that I've ever heard of. It might sound harsh, but honestly, I really don't think people even notice that she's not there. She's only hurting herself with that. Yeah, Amanda was downright bitter about her school, calling everyone in it fakes and phonies who were mean to her. And her counselor was just a total a-hole who hated her for no reason. Her professors were all idiots who wouldn't let her talk in class. Basically, while small town folk were only exasperated at her behavior, a new crew of people just shut her down, and she had no way of handling it or understanding it. How do you gently tell someone that they act profoundly weird and that is alienating to people? I mean, I guess you don't say it gently, but do get it out there. One hard conversation that might help her change for the better, you know? But okay, it's OP show, let's keep it rolling. Uh, Amanda's parents were forcing her to go to therapy by this point, which was, of course, a travesty in Amanda's mind. First of all, the therapist was located a whole block off of campus. Can you believe that? She had to walk there. Her tales about being forced to walk that far entered Tolkien-esque narratives. <laughs> uh, the woes of a mile round trip have never before been heard. At least not to this extent. Secondly, the therapist was giving her lists of things to do. Oh, like go eat at a new place once a week. Oh, bathe and change her clothes. What? And talk to a new person every day. Oh my God, this therapist is a maniac. <laughs> uh, no, seriously, if you took all this on board, if you tried to make some changes, I promise it would all turn out a whole lot better, but instead, Amanda was furious, beyond furious. She'd tell me all this over chat, then say she was gonna refuse to do anything the therapist said in a rebellious way. Again, you're only hurting yourself. I don't know why you're choosing this. I tried to coax her into going, but she was stubborn. In a weird way, the therapy pushed her even more into her strange act. The only thing that the therapy really did was help her find a Chinese place, which was across the street from the therapist's office. Hey, eat at the new place once a week, check it off. Great job, we're totally making progress. Not really. <laughs> and Amanda convinced her mom to give her money to go to that Chinese place after therapy. I think her parents did it because it did encourage her attendance, but it meant Amanda would only be away from her computer during her weekly plow through that Chinese buffet. <laughs> Uh, oh, 
This is self-sabotage to the nth degree, and I really don't know if it can be turned around. Amanda was also raging about the guy who had made me uncomfortable that time that I visited. Don't get me wrong, I appreciate that she supported me. Nothing is worse than being inappropriately touched, only to have no one back you up. But she turned her anger into a downright witch hunt. Apparently, she sent a series of nasty letters to the school newspaper, blasting him, his social club, and the guys on campus in general. And when the newspaper wouldn't print those letters, Amanda went ballistic and tried to get me to write to the paper as well to coax them into printing the story. I refused and got a shameful lecture every time we talked. See, it wasn't ever about OP and what happened to her. Amanda's using this as a way to attack the people that she doesn't like for whatever mysterious reason. Still completely self-serving, still the same old Amanda that we've grown to loathe. <laughs> Ironically, around the same time, she started telling me about her new crush. And as much as following someone around school was creepy, you know what's creepier? Watching out her window as he went back and forth to class. The only good thing was that it forced her to go out more to creep around after him. Old habits die hard, I guess. <laughs> the bad thing was that she would get rolls of film on CD and send them over email to me. Her crush, taken from the window of her room. Her crush eating. Her crush at the student union. Her crush in class. Her crush jogging. All of them had the taken while hiding look of a serial killer's collection. I told her I was cool, I didn't need to see those pictures, but they kept on coming for the duration of this crush. Bro, just go talk to him. I know you couldn't do it during high school for whatever reason, but it's college now. It's time to turn over a new leaf, you know? Take a shower, put on your finest moo moo, <laughs> and go out there and woo him. <laughs> Amanda also saw nothing wrong with sending me more copies of her artwork. Badly done anime sketches of androgynous people. I had no clue what to make of them, so I sort of encouraged her to take an art class the next semester, as apparently she did have an interest. She was offended, however, saying that she was beyond the skill of the art teachers. Jesus Christ. <laughs> Uh, besides, everyone in those classes was phony and a total biatch. Then she'd send another picture, wonky eyes in two sizes, slid up into characters' foreheads, hands shaped like flippers, and an inexplicable number of abdominal muscles. <laughs> uh, the delusion never stops. How can you improve if you already presume that you're the best thing to walk the planet? I want to be shocked, I really do, <laughs> but I'm not. Phonies was now Amanda's favorite word. She peppered it into conversation more than catcher in the rye. The professors were all idiots who she was constantly showing up, proving them wrong in class, calling out over their lectures. The people were all superficial and mean to her, and she talked about starting a blog to expose everyone. Dude, the only person that you're going to expose is yourself. Amanda is the superficial and mean one, and when people start doing it to her, it's like holding up a mirror, and she just can't stand the sight of it. The things that we dislike most about other people are generally the things that we dislike most about ourselves. Anyways, did I mention that this was over at most like two months? Yeah, and then summer vacation started. Summer vacation, yeah, that was its own story. There is a whole evolutionary path unfolding before Amanda, and it really is fun to dissect, but also makes me immensely sad. She started out just being a weird little girl who was never able to cultivate any truly healthy friendships, but also never got called out about it. And so now she's in college, apparently by herself and just drowning. The true reason that I lack sympathy for Amanda is that she refuses to even help herself. Kick your legs! Do something! She's like, I can't swim, you just have to save me! <laughs> I'm sorry, bro, you're too full of sandwiches. Anyway, I guess for the last story in this video, we'll check out what Amanda got up to during the summer break. And I'm sure things will only devolve further, so let's just get into it. Amanda gets a job. Part 1. 
Oh, we get a part two at the beginning of the next episode. That'll be nice. I'm breaking this next part of the Amanda saga up into two parts. Amanda, if you haven't been reading along, is a girl that I grew up with who went full legbeard on me, basically. This takes place the summer after my freshman year of college, when Amanda had her first really big decline. My parents had come up with a rule that I wasn't allowed to have a part-time job during my school year. I think this was supposed to keep me focused on my studies, but instead it meant that I just had the summer to earn as much money as I could. After the crazy schedule I embraced that summer, my parents relented and I could work during the school year at a moderate level. That is a crazy rule from your parents, but I'm glad they wound it back. <laughs> you see, I took a full-time job at an amusement park. It was 10 to 12 hour days, 6 days a week, and surprisingly physical. You were paid over minimum wage, but they only gave you the base pay. If you finished out the summer, you got the remainder at the end of the year as a bonus. Is that legal? <laughs> this meant that I could expect a big paycheck just before the spring semester started, which looked pretty damn good to my 19 year old eyes. I definitely get that. Proud of you for hustling, OP. The park was a little over an hour away, so I went part way with a bunch of other workers on a room in a boarding house style situation. We would cover the floors in air mattresses, try and ignore the cockroaches, take turns showering, and head out again in the morning. This is definitely like one of those live at work and only visit your house situations. Not the way I want to live, but yeah, you could do it for one summer. Other groups there partied into the wee hours, necessitating earplugs all around, but I had a quiet crew, content to jam as much sleep into the night as possible, and go Dutch on coffee in the morning. MVPs. Once a week, I'd head home and do my washing up, prove to my parents that I was alive, and I would head back out again. Adulting is so hard, isn't it? <laughs> I started the job the day after my school let out for summer, Amanda's college let out a bit later, and she came home to find that she had no internet, no money, no car, and no social life. Her parents were seriously pushing her to get a job. <laughs> That's gonna happen. We had lunch at my house on my first day off, and I bragged about the pay situation and how I would earn enough to cover my needs throughout the fall and the spring. Amanda lit up and asked if I could get her a job. Oh wow, really? You promise you, you'll try your best to not suck at it? <laughs> at the time, the hiring guidelines seemed to be mostly just having a cerebral cortex and a pulse. I knew she would be hired, but I tried to push her and told her that it was going to be a hard summer. But she had some glamorous vision in her mind. Of course, she thought she would be a lifeguard. It was the closest thing she could think of to her dreams of being a surfer and no doubt harken back to her childhood love of Baywatch. I guarantee you she's not certified for any type of CPR. Please don't let her be a lifeguard. <laughs> With this thought in mind, she went to the interview. The first issue was that she wasn't going to be a lifeguard, because she lacked any experience lifeguarding, and her low swimming level meant that she was far more likely to need a lifeguard than to ever be one. Instead, she was going to be selling beverages from a push cart. I don't know what you expected, man. <laughs> it really do be like that. Her job description being less glamorous did dampen her enthusiasm, although there was the slight matter of a car, while her mom occasionally let Amanda borrow hers, being gone day in and day out wasn't possible, and she would have to save up in order to purchase one. So she called me and asked if I would carpool back and forth, I explained the living conditions I had, and she went quiet, and then said that she would figure something out. Well, that's ominous. <laughs> the next day was Amanda's first shift. I came out afterwards to find her leaning against my car in the parking lot. She had decided to go back to the boarding house with me, she explained. There was really no other option at the moment, so... We got in the car with me telling her that this was an emergency situation, and it would only be for the night. She could try and get a spot in one of the other rooms, but really we didn't have an open spot for her. It was also obvious that Amanda had failed to prepare for this, just by the fact that her only luggage was one of those mini backpack purses. We had every available surface crammed with twin-size air mattresses, but Amanda 
hadn't brought one, meaning that she had to sleep on the floor near the door. I even had to lend her a blanket. I think she's starting to also qualify as, as a Kavina, right? There was just no critical thinking faculty available. <laughs> Amanda just lay there, complaining and trying to convince someone to give her their air mattress, until we all finally put our earplugs in and ignored her. The right move to make, honestly. The next morning I pointed out people from another room that might have a spot free. I mistakenly thought she spoke to them while I had coffee. I drove her over to the park. By this time, it was becoming evident that Amanda had no change of clothes. She was wearing the same uniform as the previous day, which she had also slept in. Dude, what? <laughs> uh, I recommended that she buy at least one more uniform to switch off into, and she said she needed to call her mom to take her home so she could get all the things that she would need to stay in their room. And Amanda nodded along. The following night, I came out to my car, and again, there was Amanda. She had explained that she hadn't found a room, and moreover, hadn't called her mom. But pff, I could just let her sleep in my room again, right? This is what some people might call a slippery slope. The line was drawn in the sand yesterday. Today is the day to hold it. Do it, OP! OP's not gonna do it. <laughs> we had some back and forth, and finally I realized... I had no choice. <laughs> you did, though. It was close to midnight, and I wasn't about to call her mom, so to the horror of my roommates, I brought Amanda back to the room again. It was one of our roommates' days off, meaning that there was an air mattress empty, and Amanda seized on this, saying that uh, she would sleep there. Another roommate interceded. Amanda could use it if, and only if, she took a shower first. At this point, Amanda was on two days in the same clothes, and at least two days not bathing, the whole time having been out in the hot sun. Oh, come on, guys, it's just my pheromones. <laughs> Get your butt in the shower, come on. It's good for you, so they tell me. Amanda was seriously offended by this statement, saying, She was fine! She was clean! But we didn't want to loan someone else's blankets and have her return to find that they smelled as though ferrets had made it on top of them, so we insisted. And then we threatened. Finally, Amanda got into the neighboring bathroom and proceeded to loudly sing yell while showering. This passive aggressive technique failed as we all just put in our earplugs again. She came out, at least bathed but wearing the same clothes that she had been wearing for the past 48 hours. Dude, she really has just given up. After two nights with Amanda, there's no way that anybody is gonna let her bunk in this place. Even if a spot frees up, I'm gonna, I'm gonna post an ad on Craigslist. I'd rather have an axe murderer move in. <laughs> the next morning, someone got donuts from across the street. Now, we had a food money jar that we were all adding to. Amanda obviously was not, but she helped herself all the same to the coffee and the donuts. Needless to say, my roommates were giving me dirty looks by this point. The next night, Amanda was leaning against my car. Again. But the next day was my day off, so I was heading back to my house. I told Amanda that I'd take her home, but she needs to get a ride the next day. Because we didn't share our days off. She asked if I'd be willing to drive her to and from work the next day. <laughs> what? Uh, uh, I had plans the next day, and two round trips would be four hours in total, so I said, no. She whines that, oh, she doesn't have a ride otherwise. I guess this was the time before Ubers and whatnot, but you can still call a taxi. Probably charge you through the nose. You're probably working for free that day. But at least you won't get fired. At least for not showing up. You might get fired for the smelly clothes, though. I don't know, man. This whole thing's devolving. <laughs> uh, exasperated, I go to the employee phone and make Amanda call her parents' house. No answer. She tells me that she's not going home if I don't give her a ride the next day. B I don't care. <laughs> what makes you think I'm invested in this situation? Obviously, OP is, but come on. At some point, it's time to pull the plug. And then one of my roommates was passing by and comes over to see what's going on. I sigh and say that if she'll take Amanda back to our room, 
Amanda can sleep on my mattress. I drove back the following evening so that I could be ready for an early start the next morning. The roommates filled me in that Amanda complained that I had taken my linens home to wash and that she had to sleep on a bare mattress. She'd wanted to switch to another bed, vacated by a roommate who shared my night off, and the roommates refused. And for some reason, I was enjoying my day off enough that I thought things might actually improve when I returned. Yeah, that's just a bit too hopeful for Amanda, isn't it? If we haven't learned by now, I don't know that OP is ever going to learn. <laughs> you keep trying to save this person, but they are still putting in absolutely no effort. How long can you feel bad for somebody who continues to sabotage themselves? You're a grown adult now, Amanda. Get it together. But I know she won't. I guess we'll check out Amanda Gets a Job Part 2 in the next video. Thank you guys as always for watching. They're going to do a surgery and put a pig heart in her, so we're going to the ranch to pick out a hog. Amanda Gets a Job Part 2. This is a continuation of part one, which was folded into the last video. If you haven't seen those previous Amanda videos, yeah, they're pretty much all bangers. <laughs> uh, playlist link in the description, thanks so much. When we last left off, Amanda had managed to get into my room on my day off, upsetting my roommates in the process. After I heard how Amanda acted in my absence, I'm basically apologizing for Amanda's behavior, and we're all settling in for the night. And then... There's a knock at the door. <laughs> oh gosh, who could it be? <laughs> uh, someone opens it, horror movie style. Don't open the door! And there stands Amanda. She's now on nearly five days in the same uniform. Blech. The smelly smell that smells. Smelly. And her eyes are glistening angrily over a set of pit stains. Immediately, she blows into a fit that uh, no one had picked her up. Uh. There's a back and forth assignment as someone explains that of course no one did because you don't live here. <laughs> she really wants to just, she's a parasite, dude. Please find somewhere else to live. Please find like anywhere else to be. I am the one who knocks. Amanda is stomping. She's complaining. She's upset that people left her behind. She says it's obvious that I'm the only person there who's her friend, which was in fact true. <laughs> she then realizes that there's no vacant bed and she'll be spending another night on the bare floor, which causes yet another ruckus. They'll just take her aside really quietly and be like, look, nobody wants you here. <laughs> I'm sorry, you need to find somewhere else to go. And then maybe you lose the friendship or something, but even then, what have you lost, really? <laughs> I'm trying to calm her down as I'm trying to placate my roommates, and then something happens that instantly changes Amanda's tune. Over in the corner, someone had brought their laptop and had hooked it up to a phone line in order to get onto the internet. Suddenly, Amanda is begging the owner to just let her use it. She had to check her email. She had no email at home, and so she had to check when class sign-up started for the week and to contact the professor. The roommate relents, mostly to shut up Amanda, and everyone crashes out to sleep. You know that's why she is this way, because people bend and fold when she throws a tantrum. Real life is gonna hit her real hard! So my alarm goes off and I drowsily sit up, only to see Amanda still crouched over the laptop in the corner. My precious! Hopes that she had just re-logged into it were, of course, in vain. No, she had spent the whole night there using the laptop. When the laptop owner realized, he was furious and unplugged it. That's like electronics addiction, right? Doesn't she have to work tomorrow? Jesus. <laughs> Amanda stood up, drowsy yet sated looking. Someone was making coffee, and she proceeded to down cup after cup that are fixed equal parts cream, sugar, and coffee. <laughs> Ew. She snags a donut for good measure. Someone points out that by this point, she'd basically spent a week there without contributing anything. She should have to put in a share for rent, and she should also have to put into the food budget jar. Amanda looked upset 
and when she goes to the bathroom, I hand the roommates extra money with apologies. By this point, I'm figuring, if I don't act, I'm gonna get kicked out of this room as well. OP, that was your out. <laughs> don't give them money. Make them all confront Amanda and let nature take its course, no? Then again, I guess stuff like that is why Amanda has clung to OP for this long. Anyway, we drive to work, windows open, because Amanda stinks. <laughs> I'm explaining the whole way that she owes us money and she's saying, uh -huh, uh -huh, to me and ignoring it completely. Obviously, I'm not getting anywhere this way, so over lunch break, I act. I call up her mother at work, at the hospital, and explain the situation. All of it. The mooching, the terrible hygiene, the recycled clothes. The mom is silent and then says that she will handle things. So that night, when Amanda comes out to the car, I was already there, with her mother. The next morning was Amanda's day off and we ended up going to an all-night diner and having a little intervention. <laughs> uh, it was rough because by this point, Amanda was at a freakout point from no sleep and was literally itching during our talk. And you thought she couldn't control her emotions before. You should see her running on no sleep. <laughs> it's gonna be a meltdown. Uh, it turns out that Amanda had just planned to continue to weasel her way into my room for the rest of the summer. Her plan was that by not paying for a room, she would have less out-of-pocket expenses. Likewise, she had only got the one uniform because by not buying more, she was saving money! And the uniform would last longer because it wouldn't fade in the wash. <laughs> God, dude! Uh, you're gonna look like Pigpen by the end! You're gonna smell! <laughs> Uh, she was also apparently eating only the purloined bagels and donuts, plus candy bars and ramen from the vending machine, to save even more money! <laughs> wow. <laughs> I'm making so much money by selling out my own health and well-being. <laughs> uh, although I guess Nikado Avocado does it. It's fine! It's fine! <laughs> Amanda's mom puts her foot down at this point. She gives me money to buy Amanda a few more uniforms the next day, plus to pay out for the money that I gave to my roommates, saying that she will make sure that Amanda pays her back. You know, Amanda's parents really have always been at least slightly on point. The problems we're having here all boil down to Amanda herself. Meanwhile, she says Amanda will have to go find some legitimate housing, and if she can't, then she'll have to pay her parents and grandparents to shuttle her back and forth to work at one dollar a mile. Furthermore, she isn't allowed in my room ever for any reason. The last obviously upset Amanda the most, and she started to whine that, Mom, they have internet! <laughs> Uh, yeah, you got your priorities straight. Of course, all of this fell on deaf ears. I got Amanda her uniforms and found someone with an open room in the same building that I was in, and I made arrangements. Bro, you're still holding Amanda's hand all through this. Although I guess it makes sense. If the mom gave Amanda the money, that ain't gonna turn into uniforms. <laughs> it's gonna turn into candy bars. Candy bars. So Amanda showed up to her next work day, grumpy that she had to pay her mom back for an air mattress, but at least she was clean and well rested. I will say that some money had gone missing from the food jar, but there were five people in the room and little things went missing later that summer, so I don't want to jump to accusing Amanda. That's big of you, OP. Doesn't really mean much except maybe you had two thieves. <laughs> we know how Amanda is by this point. If she had the opportunity, she would have. Uh, I even continued to shuttle Amanda back and forth to work, and things calmed down. Her new roommates were drinkers, and I don't think her behavior stood out. <laughs> uh, we'd talk our way back to the rooms, occasionally stopping for food. It came about during this time that Amanda had zero clue about how much things cost. She's got to be, like, developmentally impaired in some way. Whether that's just emotional or, like, inside her brain, I'm, I'm still not sure. But how do you know this little about the world? Haven't you been existing in it the whole time? <laughs> so two weeks into her job, she asked if her paycheck would be enough 
to buy a new car. <laughs> uh, no. <laughs> I stared at her and said she might be able to get a beater and like another paycheck. Remember, she still owed her parents money, but a new car? Yeah, she probably couldn't pay out for that even if she worked the entire summer. Even in 2003, minimum wage wasn't high roller money. Yeah, even back in the 50s. You're paying a nickel for a malt, but you only get 30 cents a day. <laughs> it's probably all wrong. This seriously upset her, of course. And then when she got her first paycheck, she was horrified. I ended up sitting down with her and figuring out exactly how much she would make all summer after taxes. It obviously fell far from her expectations. I don't know what to tell you, Amanda. Your time, it ain't worth that much, honestly. <laughs> <laughs> we would all vent about this job, but Amanda was surprisingly quiet. Maybe because she realized that we all had more physically demanding jobs than she did. One night, some of us were complaining about the fact that our water bottles weren't filled regularly and we were dehydrated. Amanda laughed and said, That's why she liked her job! Um, uh, unlimited soda! <laughs> uh, no. She was selling bottled drinks. She wasn't allowed to just take them. <laughs> she laughed it off. <laughs> uh, you are going to get fired in short order. First inventory check is over. <laughs> and indeed, a week later, she was fired for theft. <laughs> uh, oh, it's so good, dude. <laughs> I love this series. Uh, her parents forced her to job hunt, and she took a job flipping burgers. She constantly complained about it, and she was furious that her mom and I had made her buy uniforms when she quit after a month. Plus, every day I had off work, she would call and ask to use my internet. Get a library card, stupid! What are you- <laughs> what are you doing? Considering that my roommate had been horrified at what he found in her browser history after Amanda had used his computer, although he wouldn't tell me exactly what it was, I had to constantly find reasons that she couldn't. Again, just one honest conversation, okay? My bro doesn't like Futanari in his browser history. That's why she can't use the library, I guess. God, she really is just terrible. <laughs> and so we rolled into fall semester of my sophomore year, where Amanda contemplates transferring. I'm absolutely shocked at <laughs> Amanda's audacity. She's like, I deserve a car after a week of work, right? <laughs> and I also get to drink all the sodas I want? Are you really this disconnected from reality? I mean, obviously the answer's yes, but it's still always shocking to see it in action. So let's see it in action even further as we get into yet another part. Amanda, tries to transfer. Another installment of the life and times of a legbeard that I grew up with, Amanda. By now, we are through a year of college. Amanda has uh, sort of held a job and also been fired from it. And then she has gone to go flip burgers for the summer. You know Amanda gonna burn them burgers, right? <laughs> At the end of the summer, Amanda was looking forward to getting back to college, not for the actual college part, but for internet connectivity! Isn't the college monitoring what you do online too? <laughs> I was looking forward to the end of a summer dealing with amusement park patrons, and so we went our respective ways. Somehow it took less than a week or two for Amanda to seriously lock horns with someone at school. I still don't really know what happened, but Suddenly, she was messaging me rage-filled things about how everyone at school is terrible and mean to her and they're generally not good people. She despised everyone at college and she wanted out. Well, good news, Amanda, because everybody wants you out. So just leave. <laughs> you need to leave. I had been, at this point, talking pretty positively about my experience, so at some point, Amanda started thinking about transferring to Penn State. No, 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 no! Wait, 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 wait! Her parents, she said, were on board. Oh, God. And frankly, I didn't think that it was a bad idea. 
OP what? <laughs> the summer working and flipping burgers had been a humbling experience for Amanda, it seemed. Perhaps a fresh start with new people was exactly what she needed. Bro, what the actual hell? <laughs> no, <laughs> stop it! Plus the main campus is huge with a ton of people. She could probably find someone to click with there and the school was big enough that she wouldn't get a bad reputation. Do you not realize she's gonna attach herself to your hip? <laughs> this is so terrible. I started sending her links to clubs and activities that would appeal to her. There were others drawing anime art, there was a campus band of course, and there were also pickup soccer games. All things that I knew had appealed to her, at least at some point in the past, she started to get excited. Oh, bless your heart, OP, that's all I can say. <laughs> you really underestimated the abilities of a leg beard. Amanda's parents also came out for the homecoming game that year, bringing Amanda and Amanda's siblings. I didn't go to the game, but I rescued Amanda. Her dad could get really macho dad. We were doing sports stuff with her bros. I'm sports demon, whoa. <laughs> I took her around campus real quick, showing off the hot spots. I could tell she was overwhelmed. This campus was hugely bigger than her home campus. And uh, she got lost on her home campus. It's not a good idea. I don't know how many times I could say it. <laughs> she went to the student activities in the hub and ended up going on a flight simulator and doing some crafts before returning to her parents' hotel. A flight simulator, bro? What you doing? <laughs> I'm thinking about transferring to Penn State too. I went to breakfast with her family the next day and Amanda was thrilled with the whole thing. She kept talking about how much more there was to do at Penn State and all the things she wanted to try. Her parents were really excited too because it looked like Amanda was finally coming out of her shell. The whole weekend Amanda was so damn normal that I was really happy too. Okay, I guess we gotta learn this lesson the really hard way. Buckle in. <laughs> We arranged for her to take a bus back on a Thursday evening to meet with an advisor on campus and then stay with me for the weekend and head home on Sunday. Thursday night, Amanda crashed to sleep pretty much immediately. The next day, I said she should tag along with me to some classes and then I'd go with her to her advisor. Now, as I said, this is a big campus and Amanda was used to small, conversational classrooms. That Friday, both of my classes were introduction courses, which were huge. One was in the forum, which sat 300, I believe, and the other was in an even bigger classroom. Amanda just sat down next to me in shock. She started whispering to me, saying that in her classes, she would correct the professor about this or that. <laughs> uh, good, at least she has some shame now. I don't know where that came from. But hold on to that, yes! I hope you never get comfortable enough to correct the professor. <laughs> this was a lecture. No correcting was going to happen. So Amanda took to ripping pages from my notebooks and scrawling notes that I was supposed to email the professor after class. <laughs> Bro. <laughs> uh, way to flunk. That professor's gonna be out to get Amanda in no time flat. Half of these notes were really such stupid questions that I just quickly and silently corrected her from my textbook. Then we headed over to see an advisor. As we walked up to the door where the offices were, Amanda whirled around and said, She didn't need me. She could handle this solo. Then closed the originally open door in my face. No one gets in to see the wizard. No way, no how. But sir, I'm trying to sign up for college. That's a horse of a different color! I shrugged, went and got coffee, and worked on schoolwork outside of the building. What was said to the advisor will nayer be known, but Amanda did not like it. She did not like it one bit. <laughs> and from that moment on, her love of Penn State diminished. The advisor probably saw Amanda and was just like, look, we don't want you here, okay? If you apply, you're going to be denied. <laughs> Look at you, you're a mess. 
We went to get food in the hub, which was now too big and too noisy. The art installation was ugly and stupid. Everyone had Greek letters or Penn State stuff on, which was hysterically true. The guys here were ugly and she wouldn't date any of them anyways. Any of the thousands of male students. Let's be honest, Amanda, you would pick up any scrap, any crumb that you could get. <laughs> she questioned how you could possibly find someone here. <sighs> Apparently the campus wasn't set up for her stocking standards. And she laughed at the fact that we had cows on campus. Yeah, pigs only, I guess. <laughs> then she started asking about some of Penn State's reputation. After all, weren't we a party school? Why had I taken her to a school mandated function the last night? Weren't there huge parties here? Well, yeah, but the previous time she was with her parents and it didn't seem wise to return her a drunken mess. She accepted that, but insisted that I take her out tonight so she can get a sense of the real Penn State atmosphere. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is how I ended up taking Amanda to the frat party. Oh God, dude. <laughs> uh, what are those nights called? The, the, the pig party? The, <laughs> everybody's going out and going pigging? I'm pretty sure OP is gonna win. She, she brought the fattest girl. Congratulations. No, really, it is mean spirit and the terrible, but also, it's kind of funny. <laughs> <laughs> I only want to dunk on somebody who has a bad personality. I'll never bash you for your looks until I get a glimpse at your soul. And I know Amanda inside and out by now. Wait, not that. I didn't bang a light beard, bro! Check out the t on Teespring, thanks so much. Yeah, sure, we'll end it with a plug. We'll get in the next story. I want to see how that goes. I I'm morbidly curious. Amanda! Goes to a party. <laughs> oh boy. Uh... The ongoing saga of the girl I grew up with, the pathological liar and wannabe, Amanda. In this tale, Amanda had visited my college thinking that she would transfer. She quickly changed her mind, but she did want to go to a party. Maybe Amanda's gonna find Chris Trucker at the party. Maybe this is how the universe ends. I can't see anybody else paying any attention to her ever. She's just gonna make it real awkward and cringe and honestly, I'm, I'm, I'm thirsty for that. <laughs> so I found myself taking Amanda to a frat party. There were some girls that I knew going and it seemed like a good choice because this was a more laid back fraternity. I knew some of the guys and a few of the girls who would be there were dating brothers. Saturday night was gonna be a huge party, so for Friday they had decided to have a much smaller, closed get-together. It seemed like good party training wheels for Amanda. <laughs> uh, and she's still gonna fall on her face. She was thrilled to be going, of course, and when Amanda was happy and getting her way, she did tend to be quite normal. All through dinner she chatted about the upcoming party, and I was getting the uncomfortable feeling that she had never been to a college party before. Yeah, after shutting herself in a room and eating nothing but sandwiches? Not even knowing where the student union is on campus? <laughs> uh, what was your first clue? All of her talk was quite hypothetical and kind of childish. <sighs> Do you think there will be guys there who want to make out? <laughs> that sort of thing. Didn't you just say that you would date none of these dudes? I guess making out ain't the same thing. Cope however you need to, Amanda. <laughs> As she got more excited, I gave in to my mounting dread. I volunteered to Mother Hen. Basically, you stay sober and get everyone home unless they said otherwise at the beginning of the night. Take care of anyone who gets too drunk. Cut people off if necessary. Call a cab if they can't walk. Because this was a smaller closed party, this would normally be an easy job, but I realized that I would basically be babysitting Amanda, which made things more complicated. I don't call it Mother Hen. I say Sir Buzz Killington. You are Sir Buzz Killington tonight. Sir, haven't you had enough? <laughs> Nothing Amanda had packed was really party wear, so I begged some clothes off of a friend. Amanda smeared on her makeup with a skill level that obviously hadn't progressed at all from high school. 
<laughs> Her hair was still cut in a straight chin length thing with no real body or layers. She hairsprayed it heavily until it was simultaneously limp and helmet like. <laughs> this is so horrible, dude. Uh, why are you walking around looking like Dennis the Menace? <laughs> Uh, with trepidation in my heart, we stepped out to our first stop of the evening. We stopped by a friend's apartment to pick her up and pregame with a little bit of wine. Amanda balked when we offered her a drink and sat slouched down, dejected looking on the couch. Things were obviously not going as she had wished. Bro, what did you expect? <laughs> At the frat, because it wasn't an open party, they had a brother at the door acting as a bouncer. We walked up as he was telling someone that they weren't allowed in and said to hit up another party instead. As I said, we knew a ton of the brothers, so he just sort of smiled and waved us into the party. For whatever reason though, Amanda decided to pick a fight with this guy, getting loud and in his face that she was with me and I was a student there. And what kind of frat would let people into party? <sighs> I pulled her inside, apologizing, and said that yes, yeah, she was with me, and she's not from around here. <laughs> uh, make no excuses, just be like, yeah, she's a social cripple, I'm sorry. I wouldn't even say I'm sorry, I'll make Amanda say she's sorry. <laughs> In the basement, music was playing, people were milling about talking, we were some of the first girls there, and it was fairly laid back. A few of the girls I was with, went to see some people that they knew and fetched some drinks. Amanda just sort of stared around the place as though she was in an alien landscape, which she basically was. I, <laughs> I decided to take her around and introduce her to people, hoping that maybe that would help her open up. Instead, she was just inexplicably angry at me for knowing people and that I was shoving it in her face that I knew everyone. <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> I don't know how to fix this. There is no fixing this. Finally, I just ended up talking to some friends. Amanda standing there glaring behind me. Dude, go home. <laughs> what is wrong with you? At some point, she did decide that she wanted a drink. Oh God, her inner party demon probably is frightening. Whoa. <laughs> the offerings available weren't to Amanda's liking. I have no clue what fine alcoholic beverages she expected. Some Dom P, baby! <laughs> she got rather upset about it and then picked a can. She insisted that I open it because she was underage. <laughs> what? Uh, I was underage too, so I just confusedly opened the can and handed it to her, and watched as she took a sip and made a face. Oh, this is cute. I remember my first beer. <laughs> Half a beer later, Amanda declared herself drunk. I told her that unless she had a medical condition, there was zero chance that she was drunk on that little booze. But she insisted she was a cheap drunk. And, and OP, you don't know how my body works. She was totally drunk. Okay, whatever, Amanda, then you're drunk. She decided to switch to cans of soda for the rest of the night. God, this is pathetic. <laughs> As the party began to kick up, a brother that I knew invited a few of us upstairs to play video games in the living room. I decided to go, but Amanda stayed behind. This was a blatant break of my role as Mother Hen, but I was sick of Amanda, and I knew enough people there that I figured it was probably safe. Yes, yeah, safe for Amanda, but not safe from Amanda. You know what I'm talking about? <laughs> we were playing for a while, when one of the brothers came up to me and discreetly said, Uh, there's an issue with your girl. I knew he meant Amanda, but we'd only been there an hour and a half. What could be the issue? Amanda had sprawled across a couch, the only other occupant sitting on the arm and doing his best to ignore her. <laughs> her bra was in her hand, her shirt up around her neck, bulked to the back like a cape. Bro, this is horrible. <laughs> <laughs> uh, oh my god, okay. 
Tell me about Amanda's terrible boobs, please. <laughs> Uh, she had her chin pressed to her chest, lips pulled into a scowl, arms crossed across her stomach, and was glaring across the room. Ah! Holy mother of God! <laughs> Why is it like this? Uh, from half a beer, what are you doing? OP says, now, I'm a body positive person. I have good friends who own a nudist camp, and I've even gone before. I don't think boobs are necessarily schmexual things, and I support breastfeeding in public, etc. And while Amanda didn't look bad topless, she didn't look like she was having any fun either. <laughs> Her body language, the, the shirt, the whole scene just reminded me of maybe an Alzheimer's patient getting naked and then not understanding why they're in trouble. <laughs> Oh my god, dude! I'm dying inside. This, this is the cringe that I've wanted! I'm telling you, this series is so good. It apparently was weird to everyone else, too! And a few frat brothers asked me to get her to put her shirt back on as I passed by them. <laughs> uh, I came up to her and said, Hey, Amanda! Hey, buddy! Oh, why aren't you wearing your clothes? Amanda looked at me like I was stupid. Uh, it was a party! This is what you're supposed to do! <laughs> no. <laughs> just, just take a social cue from everybody around you for once in your life. I pointed around the room <laughs> at all the clothed people talking and dancing and staring at her in a mix of confusion and amusement. This wasn't that kind of party. Then Amanda claimed eh, she was totally drunk. Despite speaking clearly, I asked if she had had anything else to drink, and of course she hadn't. I managed to get her back into her shirt and tucked her boulder holder into my purse. Yeah, please put those orangutan tatas away, okay? <laughs> Nobody came here to see that. Thankfully, another girl wasn't feeling well. So I decided to wave over the most sober girl there and ask her to take over as Mother Hen while I took the two home. Amanda walked without a stagger the entire way home and then asked if she could hook her laptop up to my internet and spent the rest of the night just clicking around. <laughs> uh, I, I, uh, God damn, dude. There's no fixing it. Amanda woke up late the next day and sat hooked up to the internet. I think she was file sharing because I was penalized afterwards and had my internet choked off. Oof. For the next week, I found myself answering questions about what the hell was up with that weird girl at the party. <laughs> at least she didn't go to the big event. You did a good thing by keeping her on the training wheels. And yeah, like I said, she fell flat on her face. After this, I gave up on trying to make Amanda normal. Basically, I decided to keep on good terms with her, but limit contact to AIM when our families got together. As an epilogue, years later at her parents' reunion, she would flag me down and have me tell her all about the time she visited my crazy party school and got so drunk that she was running around topless. Is that how your mind has warped this situation? <laughs> Jesus. The way her brain works is just fascinating in the most terrifying way. This was followed with snide comments about how she didn't think anyone actually learned anything there because <laughs> the parties were so crazy and the people were so stupid and the classes were so bad. <laughs> and then you slapped her in the mouth, right? <laughs> At least I got a college degree, you lazy do nothing. And I'm pretty sure that's how it's gonna go for Amanda for the rest of her life. It makes me a little depressed, but I I'm not too surprised about it, all things considered. So, that's what we got for Amanda. We got probably one, two more videos left of this series. And I will be sad to see it come to a close, but man, it is so good. <laughs> that's the nice part. We can go back and revisit it anytime. Nobody gives a shit what you want! Shut your mouth! These people are trying to eat their lunch! Amanda's car. 
I bet Amanda takes real good care of her car because she takes such good care of herself. If you have missed the previous Amanda videos, that playlist in the description, please consume. Thank you so much. <laughs> this is a somewhat interstitial story since it didn't happen all at once. Interstitial? <laughs> at some point after her summer job and after working on campus for a bit, Amanda got a vehicle. It was an old broke down hatchback. Completely normal for a 19 or 20 year old. I said something complimentary about it when I saw it, but Amanda pushed it off. That was the car she was driving, but it was not her car. Okay, so she's not proud of it, but this was even weirder and deeper. Over the next few years, every time I heard her, she would repeat this, but the story only grew. Her car, her real actual car, was in the shop, or she didn't want to drive it in the snow or it was getting detailed. Therefore, she was stuck with this subpar car until she got her real car back. Bro, you're 20 years old, please stop. Have you not learned you don't need to lie to kick it? I mean, maybe Amanda does, but you're really not even that good at lying. <laughs> Just uh, pack it in. Asking her for descriptions of this real car made Amanda act pretty cagey. When I met some of her friends at her parents' anniversary, they totally bought this story, and they talked about what a bummer it was that they didn't get to see Amanda's other, really awesome car. Instead, they were in this older, worse car. Just a tidbit of weirdness from the world of Amanda. I'm pretty sure her friends were just being nice, right? Nobody's actually buying this. Those friends are just going through the phase that OP went through at one point of like, oh, if we're nice enough, we can make her change. But Amanda ain't never gonna change, bro. The only way to fix her is to call her out. But even then, she don't listen. So yeah, lost cause. <laughs> uh, I hope you get your really awesome, totally cool, made up car back uh, as soon as possible. Amanda moves on. Oh, thank God, finally. This isn't the most exciting update to the saga of Amanda, but it encompasses a year that basically shows the full downfall into all-out legbeardum. Yes, this is good for science. Totally science, just the fact, promise Swizzies. Go ahead and look it up. For those of you wanting to know the breaking point of my friendship with her, well, it was somewhere in here. Really, I'm mostly telling it for context during the last three stories. Which, it's actually four, because one of them's a two-parter, but that's fine. The fall of 2003 passed with minimal contact with her online. A random message of, how are you? A question about when our midterms were compared to hers. The only real event of that fall was that Amanda went blonde. And she went blonde with a vengeance. <laughs> there were no pictures, but... Her aim icon became a blondes have more fun thing, and it seemed every comment from her mentioned that she was a blonde. Just in case you didn't know. It's totally a Chris Trucker type of thing, where just they do this one tiny change that suddenly becomes their entire personality, because they have no actual personality of their own. God, it's so interesting to unpack. I just love this type of crap. <laughs> to this day, her public Facebook is just all posts about being blonde. She took this hair change really seriously. She still sent me art, much of which featured her personal character with golden blonde hair, but complained that I was such a prude that she could only send me the G-rated stuff. Thank God for that. <laughs> I was grateful of this fact. Her art wasn't improving, but it had more and more stuff to it. Like you could tell, she was spending a ton of time adding tiny little details to everything, but it was still the same wonky proportions and low detail overall. She would brag that she had bought new expensive markers and the drawings would be on lined school paper. <laughs> uh, oh, so she's not just the blonde, she's an artiste. I'm kind of curious what sort of small details Amanda would add, but I'm I'm also just terrified to ask the question. Probably the answer is going to be veins. Big, veiny veins. <laughs> uh, every New Year's Eve, Amanda's family had a party that my family went to. I had plans elsewhere, 
but I decided to drop by earlier in the evening to say hello to her parents. Amanda was there. Blonde was one word to describe her new hair color. Crayola yellow would have been a better descriptor. This hair color had never been seen before in nature. <laughs> she had also cut her hair into one of those Kate plus eight, may I speak to your manager Karen haircuts that are super long in the front and really short in the back. God, this whole thing is just super unfortunate. Maybe she just cuts her hair like that because those are the people that she really admire. She's like, oh, those Karens demand respect. Well, that's true, Amanda, but they don't get respected on merit. <laughs> I don't think she'll ever know the difference. Could have also just been a home dye job that went wrong and she tried to salvage it. Doesn't really matter. She looks weirder than usual. <laughs> Moving on. She seized on to me as soon as I walked in and wanted to know where I was going and tried to get me to let her tag along. I shamelessly used the bathroom and snuck out the back door and left before Amanda noticed. <laughs> Uh, I mean, scrape them off. I've been telling you to do it, OP, and now you did it. I can't feel bad. That spring, two things happened. The first was that Amanda rekindled her crush on my brother. It is its own story, as this came to a head after his wedding. The second was that Amanda dropped a bomb on me. I checked in with her on AIM, and she excused herself, saying she was going to hang out with her friends. If she had said that she was flying out the window with Peter Pan... I wouldn't have been more shocked. After that, she seemed to not respond immediately to me and would mention something about this friend or that. <laughs> Dude, you faking a party <laughs> while you're on AIM? I hate this. I hate it. This is making me so viscerally uncomfortable. I probably did something similar. That's why my brain hates it so much. But I guess OP bought in. <laughs> OP says, I started feeling that she was starting to get more social. And, relieved, I decreased my contact with her. I saw her mother that spring who told me that Amanda was struggling with her grades, but had decided to take a summer semester working to improve her GPA. See, this is like the crossroads, you know? Maybe Amanda could have gone a different path right here, but she, she has consistently chosen the path of the legbeard, so I'm not going to be surprised when that happens again. The next time I saw Amanda was that summer. Her parents had a 4th of July picnic, and my family came. Amanda was in the corner at her parents' summer house, slumped over a chair, scowling at everyone as they came in. She wore a pair of Victoria's Secret pink shorts, a few sizes too small, which she somehow squeezed herself into. <laughs> this was paired with a huge sweatshirt and a pair of platform rhinestone flip-flops, which she first bragged about, and then used as an excuse to not get up or do anything as the rest of us played volleyball and had fun. And then she uses that to continue the pity party. How could you guys have fun without me? I wanted you to just sit down with me because I told you my shoes is too big. Take your shoes off, stupid. <laughs> when the food was served, I sat near her. I was thinking that she might be a bit more open now that she had had some more social interactions, but she seemed surly and angrier than ever, just snapping at everyone for things like not having her favorite soda chilled and because she had to eat with a plastic fork. But it was her family, so everyone just sort of ignored it. Yeah, wrong place, wrong time. <laughs> uh, keep your head down as far as I'm concerned. But I will say this, that Karen haircut has never been more fitting than in this moment. So I coaxed Amanda into talking about her friends, which made her family pay attention. It was weird because she would say something seemingly banal about hanging out with someone and they would all react really enthusiastically supportive like, woo, yeah, you go girl, you hangy outy girl, hanging out with your friends, just hanging out. <laughs> Uh, oh, she's 20. Please <laughs> stop it. Uh, afterwards, she started messaging me online more and at some point sent me an invite to come play a game with her. It was Second Life. Oh, that's a bucket of cringe all on its own, isn't it? <laughs> Pretty soon I learned all the facts. All of her friends, all the hanging out and social time was on Second Life. There were no real friends. Only online friends. 
Although I will say that I prefer online friends to real friends. There's really no social contract. I could get up and walk away at any point. <laughs> Respond at my leisure. So yeah, I'm not going to agree with OP on that one. <laughs> I like my online friends. Online friends is real friends. We're all friends here, right? Comment section. Tell me that we're friends. Tell me that we're friends. <laughs> As fall semester rolled around again, she told me that she had stopped going to the therapist, which she never really went to with any sort of purpose anyways. She was sending me invites to another site that she sang the praises of. I don't remember the name, but it had these cartoon icons that you could customize. Oh, Neopets, bro. Hell yeah. <laughs> Somehow between Second Life and that other site, Amanda was earning a small income. Some of the artwork she was sending me was creeping from PG-13 to R-rated. Supposedly some of this art she was selling, and I only got free sneak peeks because we were old friends. <laughs> Uh, and if you believe that, I got a bridge in Brooklyn that I like to sell you. If she is selling that art, she's selling it real cheap, I'll tell you that. She's probably selling Neo points. That's what I used to do to get a few bucks back in the day. I think it was a million Neo points for like 15 to 18 dollars, depending on how many. It was like printing free money from the internet before I learned how to print, you know, big money from the internet <laughs> via YouTube. <laughs> Ah, <laughs> uh, anyways, then Amanda disappeared. Oh, okay. <laughs> After a bit, I was concerned, and I called her mother. That was how I learned that Amanda had dropped out of school and run off to live with a boyfriend that she had met online. Bro, I don't know. I, I want to be scared or sad or something, but that boyfriend will get his punishment. He he's got to hang out with Amanda. Okay, you wanted to steal her from her family? Here she is! <laughs> Now provide everything for this 20-year-old woman who refuses to work at all. Be careful what you wish for, that's all I'm saying. <laughs> for the next four years, I had no contact with Amanda. Occasionally, I would speak to her mom, and she'd mention that Amanda had emailed and was doing well, but I don't think her family ever even saw her. If I thought of her at all... It was to prep the speech that I'd give on forensic files when she inevitably turned up dead, murdered long ago by that supposed online boyfriend. <laughs> uh, wow, that's dark. The next time I saw her, or anyone else for that matter, was at her parents' 25th anniversary party. Hey, at least she showed up to that. She is still alive. It's confirmed. And it turns out that the Amanda at the party is actually just the boyfriend in a wig. <laughs> You're going all Norman Bates in here. I don't know, man. I, I'd like to be worried for Amanda or something like that, but you, you're 20. At that point, yeah, you can make your own decisions, and obviously the parents did let her do exactly that. I think she's probably going to learn some hard lessons from this, but that's just how it be sometimes, too. I am glad that OP was finally able to, like, really peel Amanda off. She got a new friend group. OP sneaks out the, the back door of the bathroom. <laughs> okay, she gets the message. I'm only hanging out with this new friend group now. And that's probably for the best. Unfortunately, yeah, OP does get another run in with Amanda at the uh, anniversary party. But that's just the downside of familial ties, isn't it? And I mean, like, ties between family, not between Amanda and her. Whatever. Okay. <laughs> We're gonna read that and, and see how it goes, and I uh, hope you'll enjoy! Amanda and the Anniversary, Part 1. I don't know if we're gonna do both parts. We might as well do both parts, right? Author's notes, I tried to shorten this up, but it is going to be a two-parter. The weird thing is, I ended up hanging out with my brother the other night, and this came up in conversation, so the whole thing is fairly fresh within my brain. God, I'm so excited. This is it. The final dumpster fire. <laughs> uh, we're coming to an end of the sagas of the legbeard that I grew up with, Amanda. After having disappeared, moving off with an online boyfriend, I might have thought that she was out of my life for good. I was wrong about that, however. Amanda's sister and brother, let's call them Betty and Chad for the sake of the story, along with her grandparents, decided to host a party for her parents' 25th anniversary. It was going to be at the local park, which has an enclosed pavilion. There would be a barbecue along with a potluck. Hey, sounds pretty classy. 
It does my heart super well to see like how well adjusted the parents and the brothers and sisters are. And then Amanda is just like this anomaly. <laughs> I'm still unsure how this even happened. My parents were still very good friends with her parents. If anything, more so since my mom had a cancer relapse since my last story and Amanda's mom was really there for her. My brother was a very close friend of Chad's and I was still on really good terms with the rest of the family to the point of sometimes referring to her mother as my aunt. This party was going to be a surprise and my family was involved in the planning to some degree. Do surprise parties really happen in real life? Or just like, <laughs> nobody loves me enough to throw me a surprise party. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, we're getting to some deep sea the issues of Red Exes too, ain't we? Uh, Amanda, for years, had only been available to contact through email. Her siblings were really concerned about whether or not she would even show up for the party. While her parents, grandparents, aunts, and uncles would no doubt love to see her, Betty and Chad were long since over Amanda's behavior and sort of thought that she would ruin the anniversary. <laughs> I mean, they lived with her. They know. They called that out. <laughs> uh, the day of the party, I helped with the setup. We told guests to be there a half hour beforehand, or if you were late, to come in through the back door. My mom was in charge of actually getting Amanda's parents to the party. We had just heard word that they were on their way, about to arrive at any time. Everyone settled down, lights off, and then the door opened. Surprise! Only it wasn't the happy couple. Six people stood, silhouetted in the doorway, headed by a large figure in a dress and flip-flops. Amanda had returned. Just completely unannounced? I mean, <laughs> you disappear for four years and just come walking back in the door? Okay, hide behind the couch, though. We don't want to waste the good surprise on you, dum-dum. <laughs> They moseyed inside, Amanda smirking at people around the room. No one quite knew how to react, but there was barely a few minutes passed before the door opened again. A few people called out a half-hearted surprise. It turned out later that the couple had seen Amanda come in, basically ruining the entire surprise. We wasted the good surprise on you. Amanda had indeed changed yet again. She had gained weight, her hair was longer now, still bleached and dyed to a sickening color of yellow, and pulled into an unwashed side ponytail. Oh, side ponytails, remember when that was a thing? Around like Napoleon Dynamite days? Can't remember what year, doesn't matter. She wore a retro style dress that fit her poorly, squeezing her middle, while the bust drooped with obviously no bra. Oh, look at that. It's like a fried egg hanging off a nail. <laughs> uh, it was made from a cheap looking shiny style and considering the rest of her appearance was unkempt and greasy, it just looked awful. I don't know what else you expected from Amanda at this point. Like she would have a glow up in those four years that she disappeared and had no parental supervision. I'm surprised her teeth they've fallen out of her head. <laughs> People came over to greet her. This was, after all, her family who hadn't seen her in years. She completely managed to take the attention away from her parents' arrival for like a good 15 minutes. I basically ignored her and hugged Amanda's mom and started helping my brother and Betty with finishing up the buffet. Is it Amanda's fault that she stole the thunder or is it the fault of all these family members that decided to put the reappearance of this wayward daughter above the 25th anniversary of the people who produced her? As fortunate or unfortunate as that might be. <laughs> I got the feeling that Amanda was really sour towards everyone greeting her because it took no time at all for everyone to turn all the attention back to her parents, ignoring Amanda and her group of people. They planted themselves in a back corner near the presence away from everyone else. Okay, so you made appearances. You're done here, right? <laughs> now head on home. Back to wherever the hell you came from. And I mean, in truth, you can't really even blame the family for greeting Amanda because she would have made a big scene if, if nobody made a big enough deal about it. You just can't win with her. She's insufferable. Not like the worst beard we've ever seen, but definitely a beard that I love to hate. <laughs> Eventually, I approached Amanda. She said something about 
me being her old friend from high school to the crew with her. Even though this was true, she said it laced with this sarcastic tone. The rest of her group was a mess. There were two guys. One had a mop of short hair atop a greasy face. He sat staring through round frame glasses that magnified his eyes, his mouth constantly open. That boy looks like a fish. <laughs> a fish with a little afro on it. <laughs> he was the number one tongue scrubber. He was slouched down, looking like a human beanbag. <laughs> no spine, no spine. This one Amanda introduced as her boyfriend. Ugh. And then grilled me as to if I had a boyfriend, and if so, where was he? And I just said that, yeah, I had started seeing someone, but he wasn't here. Amanda made a huh noise, and then smirked at her compatriots. Dude, I, I don't think this is as big of a victory as you're thinking it is right now. <laughs> Look at this human being agreed to be my boyfriend. Yeah, he's a, he's a human being, all right. Great job. <laughs> uh, you found one that would accept you. The rest of her crew went entirely unintroduced. The other guy was in a classic ponytail and trench coat in warm weather combination. The girls, I don't know, fairly interchangeable, all with ill-fitting clothing and greasy hair. One wore eyeliner that was basically like a solid quarter inch of black around each eye. Let's call them stench let one, two, and three, I guess. It was obvious that Amanda was the queen bee of this crew. Every time she said something, the girls would fawn and Trenchcoat would stare longingly at her. Dude, this whole dynamic is just blowing my mind right now. At least Amanda did find her place in the sun, after all. I mean, you're the centerpiece of basically a group of village idiots. You're the village idiot of the village of idiots. <laughs> but I don't know. It's what she wanted all along. And I wish I could be legitimately happy for her, but she's probably just going to be terrible about it anyways. This whole friend group, this whole social dynamic is just depressing the hell out of me. <laughs> so Chad, Amanda's brother, is by this point frantically waving down OP's brother. He was concerned about this development and wanted to buffer his sister from the party. Dude, that's big brain time. <laughs> they were already a bit isolated in the corner, but he asked us to take over the only table between them and the rest of the group, putting party setup stuff across it so nobody would sit near them. <laughs> it seems overboard, but I mean, he, he has lived with her. He knows it's only a matter of time until this whole thing self-destructs. And so... I was going to find myself within eavesdropping distance of the table for much of the anniversary party. It was obvious from the get-go that this visit from Amanda and her collection was from a really mean-spirited place. I don't know if it was a ploy to prove how much better than her family she was, or if it was to embarrass her parents, but confirmed Amanda was there to make a show. I don't think she knows how to do anything else, honestly. She is just constantly making a spectacle of herself <laughs> it was as if whatever redeemable traits she had had been boiled away and the crew she was with was bringing out the very worst parts of her they sat around making snide and nasty comments about everyone there all except for amanda's boyfriend who puddled in his chair looking almost confused oh poor guy he's senile or something that's why he agreed <laughs> He doesn't even know where he is right now. <laughs> uh, uh, first, we called that the food was ready, and Amanda's table went from slouched in chairs to booking it across the room. Betty made a pretty bold move, however, blocking Amanda and asking what she had brought for the potluck. Of course, none of Amanda's crew had brought anything at all, so Betty got angry and started saying that they should block Amanda from eating, but Chad stopped this. It wasn't worth the fight, and it would upset their grandmother. I added that my brother and I were going to try and buffer their table and just hope that they didn't ruin the event. Besides, how much food could they actually eat? <laughs> Bro. <laughs> uh, you see the size of that girl? Oh no, man, I'm thinking she could pack it away. The answer was, they could eat a lot. Thankfully, we had staged out portions of food, 
only putting out half of many dishes because they plowed through some of these dishes like steamrollers, taking all of the available portions. Jesus Christ. <laughs> it's like locusts showed up to the party. I told you, when I'm finished, you can have what's left. There won't be any left. I'll type up all the rest of this later where Amanda's mean girl antics get even worse and then they backfire horribly. Yes, some karmic justice, please and thank you. And part of me wants to cut the video right here, leave it on a cliffhanger, but I ain't gonna do that to you. You beautiful people, I just can't. And uh, if you'd like to thank me for being so generous in sharing the second part, maybe you could like, comment, subscribe on the video if you haven't already. You're probably enjoying it, you watched this far. Only one part to go. So let's jump into it. Amanda and the Anniversary, part two. Continuing the tale of Amanda, my childhood friend, and her parents' anniversary. After everyone had their food, we had a little slideshow thing that we projected. Bro, I think everybody hates those. <laughs> now the mean-spirited nature of Amanda's table reached full tilt. In between snarfing down food, they'd bark out nasty comments about the pictures. Oh my god, who cares? Baby pictures and pictures at their grandparents' house were met with comments about how poor they looked. I'm gonna tell you a little secret, Amanda. Time has not changed that. <laughs> you look more broken, busted than ever before. At first, I was shushing them, but I realized it didn't seem to matter that other people were hearing them and... I was just giving them attention. I guess the best thing you can do is try and freeze them out, but it is a hard thing to ignore. Then when they got to her parents' wedding pictures, admittedly 80s fashion, especially wedding fashion, didn't age that well, but one of the girls at the table who hadn't met any of these people before literally shouted out, Oh my god, <laughs> she is so ugly. The room went silent. Everyone turned to look, and Amanda just looked smug. Everyone uncomfortably went back to their food. Dude, this is depressing. <laughs> Somebody say something, but I guess they just know it's not gonna have any effect. At least not for Amanda, but we don't know about this, this anonymous leg beard that's in the group, right? Maybe we could shut her down. Let's at least try. And then there was a break in the party, with people just chatting while we reset the buffet, and the mean girl's comments continued from the table in an unrelenting spew. At first, people were trying to talk to Amanda, but she would answer with a sarcastic tone and an eye roll, appreciative snickers from her posse. Even her parents got this treatment and decided to leave her alone. I hope this is like her last appearance. <laughs> her parents are like, oh, I thought I missed her. It's a good thing she showed up and reminded me who she actually is. You can stay gone now, Amanda. We are closing the book. Finally, OP's brother and Chad were actively acting to deflect anyone foolish enough to try and talk to Amanda, redirecting them elsewhere, distracting them, anything to keep innocent family members from that corner of the pavilion. This was probably good, as you could smell the group from the next table where I sat. Just put a fan on and be like, you guys look really hot. <laughs> Let's blow the smell off in this direction. <laughs> I sat back down and I realized how much the table of wasted carbon complained and mocked. This whole party was cheesy. Betty was so much uglier than Amanda. Amanda's relatives were redneck idiots. The food sucked. The music sucked. The party sucked. This town, it totally sucks. I heard them mock her grandmother, who walked with a bent back, calling her Quasimodo. Dude, bro, insult the music, the food, the town. You do not come at grandma. Grandma begat everything that made this possible, and you will show some goddamn respect. Go kick him in the neck right now, OP. No jury in the land would convict you. Ugh. Her uncle's wife was so fat. Oh my god. That person's outfit was ugly. These tablecloths must have come from the dollar store. They couldn't believe that Amanda came from this horrible town. Jesus Christ, dude, it is so much to unpack, and I'm glad that they were segregated, honestly. 
They should have been completely kicked out. Can you imagine having this much insecurity and, and self-hatred that you just project all over everyone that hoves into your field of vision? You're just the worst, and you're gonna die alone. It's only a matter of time until this entire friend group implodes because they're so goddamn hateful. Huh, <sighs> Amanda's posse was all seemingly trying to one-up each other on the comments, the whole time looking toward Amanda for her approval. Amanda was seemingly, in her glory, basking in this attention. Where did she find these people? What the hell is this? <laughs> I started helping to bust the tables before the rest of the party started, and I heard raised voices. I turned to see Betty at their table, looking ready to kill Amanda. I came over to see that a good portion of the food that her group had taken had gone uneaten. Betty was upset that so much food was going to waste, and Amanda was calling her cheap. Then Betty pointed out specifically that there were five or six cupcakes sitting there, the icing licked off, but the cake part completely untouched. Amanda rolled her eyes and said, They were uneaten. We should just put them back on the buffet for someone else. I quietly threw the cakes out. Bro, place that cupcake firmly in your palm and just smack Amanda in the side of the head with it. <laughs> uh, she doesn't understand anything except for corporal punishment, okay? After we cleaned up from the meal, one of the longtime friends of the family had a treat. He was a local DJ, and he had prepared what he called a recap of her parents' life, which was actually a roast of the couple. It was cute and funny, full of little stories and jokes, set to snippets of music. A few of the people in the audience got into it and added comments, but it was all sort of fun joking with the couple rather than at the actual couple's expense. And guess who doesn't know the difference at all? <laughs> Amanda! At first, the back table just rolled their eyes, all exasperated that they had to sit through such a boring thing. Then they started mocking back to the DJ, more mean stuff, making fun of the family. For instance, there was a joke about Amanda's dad being from a good Catholic family, which is why he had so many brothers and sisters. From the back table, I hear someone say about how his mom obviously couldn't keep her legs shut. Then they questioned whether they all had the same father. Jesus Christ, dude. How, how is everybody in the family just sitting here enduring this? How has no drunk uncle gone over and just like molly walloped these kids? I would be that drunk uncle. <laughs> I don't care. Thankfully, most of this was being partially drowned out as the DJ had the sound system obnoxiously loud, so most of the party didn't seem aware. I mean, thank God for that, at least. But Amanda really is just reaching new lows, you know? You're dunking on your own grandmother, on your own father. You're never gonna live this down, nor do you deserve to. Then the story got to the wedding. He pointed out that they got married only to have their first child three months later. I forget what the joke was associated with this, but it obviously took Amanda by surprise. From behind me, I hear, what? <laughs> I turned, unable to resist, and told Amanda that her parents definitely had a shotgun wedding. <laughs> what? I clarify that her mom was pregnant with her when her parents got married. <gasps> what? <laughs> this last one was loud enough that people turned to see what was up. Amanda went from looking horrified to upset, and then tears welled up in her eyes. I can't believe you, you were so self-absorbed that you never did the math on this, Amanda. <laughs> When's your guys' anniversary? Oh, my birthday? Okay. I won't feel too bad about it, honestly. The parents have been married 25 years. <laughs> There's something there. But of course, Amanda just sees this as an opportunity to make it all about her. Meanwhile, the party is all laughing along with the next joke. But Amanda is starting in these heaving, sort of fake sobs. They were making fun of her. She can't believe that. And that's why she now hates her family. Amanda gets up and flees the table, ducking out the side door. Stench let one and two follow, as does Trenchcoat. 
Stenchlet 3 stays behind and starts chastising the boyfriend for not following Amanda out. Boyfriend looks completely baffled and overwhelmed. I don't think he even knew where he was. <laughs> That's what I said! Here, come here, baby boy. Just maintain a terrified grip on my wrist while I feed you some tapioca pudding. Where am I? This isn't my house! <laughs> I know, just calm down. Enjoy your pudding. Anyways, eventually Stench let three stops and starts to look uncomfortable with the situation and slumps down in her chair. The roast finishes, the DJ puts on music, people are chatting and mingling when Amanda slams the door open. Yeah, she couldn't just leave. She couldn't just flee into the night. <laughs> She's gotta make it a show every time. She storms back inside, shooting everyone death glares and slams her butt back into the seat arms crossed over her chest. Stenchlet 3 begins to say that she tried to get boyfriend to follow, but Amanda holds up her hand. Honest to God, she held up her hand like a freaking pharaoh <laughs> to silence this girl who is immediately cowed. <laughs> like a pharaoh, I love that. My brother and I had been watching across the room, exchanging commentary. It was like watching a car wreck, only slightly less sad and more hysterical. The drama-filled event of Amanda finding out that she was almost born out of wedlock had effectively killed the Mean Girls conversation. Yeah, dude, job done. Instead, 12 baleful eyes just stared out at the crowd enjoying themselves. Oh yeah, how dare they? Why don't y'all just go home? <laughs> I'm gonna suggest that like five more times until you actually do it. People started to trickle out. Aunts and uncles coming to say goodbye to Amanda who just rolled her eyes or made some rude comment in return. Finally, it was just her parents, her siblings, my family, and one or two other people all cleaning up. Amanda's crew still sat in the corner, still not talking. <laughs> Uh, eventually I go and ask them to move as we had to fold up their table and chairs. They got up, moans and groans and complaints. Instead of this being a cue to, you know, leave, they started to mill around the room, opening up closed boxes to try and get leftovers and just generally getting in the way. It never gets any easier to watch this type of stuff, you know? <laughs> I want somebody to go up and say it's time to go home now, but you can't really do that at a party. Amanda had wandered over to the card and present table. A lifetime of experience meant that I wasn't about to let her steal her parents' gifts, and I went and watched her very closely. We exchanged glares over the table until Chad noticed and started to take all of the presents out to his car. Her crew didn't leave until we were finally at the okay, we are turning the lights off now <laughs> stage of the night. <laughs> uh, I found out later that they went back to her parents' house. Amanda threw a fit when she found out that her parents were using her room for storage. Remember, she didn't even speak on the phone with them for four years, but apparently expected her high school room to be a shrine, left untouched. Jesus, the, the disconnect is so strong. Why would you possibly believe that? <laughs> uh, she then expected her parents to put up all five of her friends for two nights with no advance notice or anything. Her mom was scrambling to pull out air mattresses and figure out how to feed that many freaking people. Yeah, it's called a Motel 6, Amanda. <laughs> Uh, you're not welcome, I'm sorry. You are my daughter, but I heard you call Grandma Quasimodo. Now get the hell out of my house, you know? <laughs> but the mom, too nice. I guess that is why Amanda ended up like this. Anyways, thankfully, when Chad got back home, she ended up getting in a fight with him and flounced out to the car, her flock in tow, and drove off into the night. Oh, good. Brother is gonna be the gatekeeper here. That's also the role that I used to play in my family. Hey, Chad, I respect that. Well, thank God that that finally came to an end. I don't know where the hell she found these people or why they thought that any of this was okay. I'm just in shock. I am flabbergasted. How will the Amanda saga end? 
I guess we'll find out in the last video. There's two more parts to go. I might have to mix it in with a one-off Legbeard story or a song or something like that. But it should be a good time. I do want to save it, though. Legbeard stories never truly end. We can wind it back and watch it again. Forever. And ever. And ever. And ever. Amanda goes to a wedding. I thought we were done with you, Amanda. What are you doing back here, Amanda? Last, we heard about Amanda's attempt to ruin her parents' anniversary. And if you missed that dumpster fire, link's always in the description for you. Thank you for joining me today, by the way. Now, we shall hear about Amanda's bizarre behavior at my brother's wedding. Is her behavior ever not bizarre? <laughs> now, some of you, no doubt, are tearing your hair out, wondering why on earth Amanda was invited to a wedding. Simply put, well, she wasn't. <laughs> her brother Chad was a groomsman. Her parents and her sister were invited. But Amanda was not only missing from the list of invitees, she was on the oh hell no list. And somehow she still got in fire that doorman. <laughs> now, since the anniversary party, there had been a fair amount of upheaval in her family about her behavior. Her siblings were just done with her completely. However, she had started to contact her parents more often asking for money. They were giving her small amounts of money, contingent on her visiting occasionally, and getting back into therapy. Yeah, the therapy is the important part. You don't actually have to visit until therapy's over, okay? <laughs> Basically, her parents were still trying to reconnect and were still hoping to maybe fix her. It's not gonna happen, but I understand the parents' love, I gotta say. After the invites went out, my brother got a phone call from Amanda's mom asking if Amanda could please be invited to the wedding. She reminded him that they grew up together and that this would be a huge olive branch to try and help Amanda. He felt guilty as hell, but he held firm, saying that people had to be cut because of the budget. When Chad found out about this, he was furious, but he didn't fight with his mother at my brother's request. Soon after, we found out Amanda had moved to another state and was breaking down communication with her parents yet again, and so she passed out of our thoughts. Well, good rid- Psych! Oh, now she's really- Psych! <laughs> How many times are you gonna do this, Amanda? Please stop. I'll add another thing which will become important later. My brother is biologically my cousin, my father's brother's son. That's quite a long story, but the short version is that after his parents divorced, his mother wasn't mentally sound and left him with his dad, who in turn wasn't capable of caring for a child. My parents ended up taking him in and raising him, and so we grew up together from a young age, as siblings. Although it was never a legal adoption, he calls my parents mom and dad, and we really only refer to each other as cousins when conversation has something to do with biology. If I remember correctly, Amanda wanted to study your brother cousin's biology. That's probably the reason she comes to the wedding, right? Am I right? Let's see. <laughs> the day of the wedding, we had a fair amount of drama, but it all had to do with my brother's biological mother and siblings. Amanda was the furthest thing from our minds, and we somehow got through the ceremony. Afterwards, the wedding party had photos in the sanctuary, and eventually we headed over to the reception. The wedding party was staged outside, waiting to be introduced when Betty came outside, her face pinched, and pulled her brother Chad aside. Chad came to me. It seems that Amanda had shown up with her boyfriend. Oh, that old beanbag boyfriend from the last time. It's the only reason he's still with Amanda, you know? No spine whatsoever. I quickly relayed this information to my brother, who told me to handle it however I felt best. Sneaking into the reception, I walked up to Amanda's mom. She looked truly upset and was begging me to let Amanda stay, saying that she and her boyfriend had driven six hours just to be there. Nope, nope, I'll, I'll give you the money for a hotel and then you drive the six hours back, but you can't be here. I might be ripped apart for giving in, but try to understand a few things. First off, the drama that had been percolating with my brother's biological family dwarfed anything that Amanda could pull. Wow, seems like there's a story there too, huh? <laughs> At that moment, 
The brush fire just wasn't as important as the massive forest fire. Secondly, her mother was swearing up and down and sideways that she wouldn't let Amanda out of her sight and would totally keep her in check. Yeah, totally. Thirdly, I knew that Amanda would kick up a ruckus if I tried to kick her out. I would seem more like the bad guy for kicking someone out of a wedding than anything. The in-laws were already giving us the stink eye because of the biological family drama. Those who actually knew Amanda there knew her from childhood, so kicking out a family friend while her relatives were around would just be classless. Plus, any additional fuss would no doubt kick up the biological family drama into a full boil. That's fine, let it boil, man. I'd prefer to deal with one fire than two, honestly. <laughs> it's not gonna go well. Reluctantly, I did tell Amanda's mom that if she pulled anything to ruin the wedding, we would throw her out, but that she could stay for now. I filled in Chad and Betty, and the reception started in earnest. Oh boy, here we go. <laughs> Amanda, I might add, was dressed fancy for this occasion. Her hair was coated with something that made it look downright wet, it was so greasy. Her makeup was just coated on. She wore a blue dress with a full skirt that was covered in skulls, a uh, traditional wedding attire, I guess, and it was accented with bows. In order to make this extra dressy, she was covered in as much jewelry as she could feasibly wear. Among other things, there were plastic pony bead bracelets, like those raver girls wore back in the day, and cheap dangling chains with pendants. She clanged as she moved. How many years Amanda's not learned a damn thing about subtlety? <laughs> uh, you showed up to this wedding dressed like a candy kid? What are you doing? Do me a favor, please. Get out of here. Boyfriend wore a dirty dress shirt, which he was positively bursting out of. With his big round glasses, he was peering around confused like an ugly, slow Loris. I'm gonna try not to come at the boyfriend too hard, you know, because... I haven't seen him actually do anything, like anything at all. Like, I'm not even sure that he's actually breathing right now. <laughs> I was technically paying for the photographer, long story, and after we were settled and started eating, he approached me. Indicating Amanda, he asked if she was a member of the family. I said no. <laughs> and he uncomfortably tells me that Amanda informed him that her boyfriend was going to propose during the reception. Of course. She said that the photographer was to stay near her in order to get some good shots of the proposal. Oh, hell no. First of all, I told the photographer that we didn't want a single picture of Amanda from this wedding, period. After that, I flagged down Chad. I wasn't about to let Amanda try to detract attention away from the wedding couple. And frankly, I didn't want to bother my brother with any of this. Chad and I started to plot how to handle this situation when we had a good opening in timing. Amanda's mom was keeping to her like glue. They'd gotten up to go to the bathroom, leaving boyfriends slouched alone at the table like a lost toddler. <laughs> uh, I feel so bad for that guy. What the hell is he doing? Chad decided to go talk to him, you know, man to man. A few minutes later, Chad was back chuckling and told me not to worry about anything. I really believe that Amanda thought she was getting engaged that day. She had her chair pushed back to be in the middle of the aisle with a sight line for photography. This was obviously a highly practiced pose. Her feet were staggered, one toe pointed, her back arched, a smile on her face. It took us a while to figure out that this was her engagement pose, exactly how she wanted to be when she was engaged. We'd do status checks throughout the reception, and she just sat like that, frozen for the better part of the time. Her fixed smile slowly fading and becoming more forced, her posture becoming slouched and leaning. <laughs> uh, yeah, hope floats, man. At one point, I got too near, and she flagged me down. She was getting engaged tonight. This was her engagement dress. I said, oh and kept on my way. <laughs> uh, I'm loving this, dude. Did they talk about this at all, or she just presumes a whole lot about the boyfriend? I'm just glad Amanda wasn't there when they threw the bouquet, and she smothered all the bridesmaids. <laughs>
Uh, after a little while, the DJ made an announcement which made the boyfriend snap to attention and get to his feet. Amanda's pose had faltered during this, but she suddenly snapped to attention as well, and the smile got bigger. But it was just the DJ announcing that the candy bar was now open. Her boyfriend was all over that, filling up several favor boxes with glee, and Amanda stared at him with more than a little bit of malice. I mean, yeah, no no proposal, but hey, we got M&Ms. That, that's a victory. <laughs> we take those. Uh, all in all, Amanda was probably the best behaved for the reception that I had seen her in years. She was so busy trying to look perfect that she almost blended into the background. You're probably wondering why I was so confident that she wasn't going to interrupt the wedding with her engagement. Simply put, when Chad spoke to her boyfriend, it turned out that the boyfriend had zero clue what Chad was talking about. The whole engagement plot was evidently Amanda's own doing, and she either failed to follow through with the boyfriend, or he simply didn't catch on. Oh, delicious disappointment. I've never been more glad that her boyfriend is a semi-sentient beanbag chair. <laughs> the only time that Amanda really popped up during the reception was during the dance. This was one of the sources of drama with the biological family. My brother wanted to do a mother-son dance with our mom. Then they wanted to do a family dance where he would dance with me while his new bride danced along with her brothers. As I danced with my brother, he suddenly said, What the hell? and Amanda was right behind me, staring. It was the first that he had even noticed her at the reception. I quickly said she crashed the wedding, but we were already in on it, and we danced away to the other side of the dance floor. Amanda continued to stare holes in us from across the room. Yeah, we've seen that move a few times before. <laughs> the reception was starting to wind down when Amanda finally started to realize that her engagement dreams were not coming true. Chad pointed out she started to scowl. A few minutes later, we saw her disappearing with her boyfriend through the door, her parents in tow. I grabbed Chad, and we made our way out to the parking lot. Amanda stood unsteady on her heels, screaming at her boyfriend that he had embarrassed her, that he was supposed to propose tonight. Didn't he even bring a ring? And he was just cowering like a wounded puppy. <laughs> She screeched that they were over and hit him with the tiny purse that she was carrying. A few people in the parking lot started taking notice and Amanda made her way across to her car and started giant fakey sobs with her shoulders racking. After a moment, she turned and realized that no one was responding. <laughs> so she screamed something unintelligible at us and then got in her car. I saw so mama! And she bumped into a landscaping wall while she backed out. <laughs> and then she jolted forward and into the night. It's a good thing that's not her real car. Her actual really cool car is in the shop right now. <laughs> Amanda's just an instant classic. We all stood shocked for a moment. And then Chad basically helped boyfriend up, brushed him off, and took him inside for a drink. I heard later that he sat and drank a beer, with tears rolling down his face, but he wouldn't really talk to anyone. He was last seen waiting outside on the front porch for a taxi. God, that poor little idiot. He's probably taking the taxi back to Amanda's house. Six hour taxi ride? How much that gonna cost him? <laughs> the rest of us went back to the reception and enjoyed it, Amanda free, for the rest of the night. This was the last time that I actually saw Amanda. I'll wrap up with some of the disturbing messages that I got from her and an epilogue in the next post. So do her parents finally give up on her at some point? Does the boyfriend give up on her? Or does she just attract people that ceaselessly hold on and hope for her to get better when in actuality sh she's made no move to even try and get better? She is still the same pathetic person deep down that we saw in part one uh, over the course of decades. We've seen no character development, and yet, it is Ambrosia. <laughs> uh, I wish this story would never end, but unfortunately there is only one more part. So uh, let's get into it and see how it goes. Amanda, Aftermath, Epilogue, and End. 
For context on this, I need to go back. Way back. As I said before, my brother is biologically my cousin. Amanda's parents were already friends with my mom and dad when we took him in, so she was quite aware of our relationship. Although a ton of people we went to school with never questioned the fact that we were siblings. And why would they, honestly? In high school, however, Amanda took to crushing on my brother, which was mentioned briefly. As I said, she didn't know the difference as a teen between crushes and stalking victims, and she was really creepy and weird about it. <laughs> as she is with most everything. Literally as soon as I heard about it, I cornered her, told her to knock it off or else. She stopped her normal antics, moved on to a new victim, but was known to make moon eyes at my brother occasionally afterwards. My brother, I should say, had an unfortunate haircut in high school, spiked with bleach blonde tips. He was also known to affect edgy t-shirts and whatnot. I mean, you're basically describing me to a T. Which was the style at the time? <laughs> basically, by the end of high school, he had outgrown all that gotten a decent haircut, and learned to dress himself. We can't really be held accountable for decisions that we made at 16. Amen to that, OP. <laughs> As I briefly mentioned back in college, I noticed a character in the sketches that Amanda would send to me. He shared my brother's fairly unique name, although she spelled it weird. Think George with a J instead of George with a G. He also was drawn with blonde spiky hair, Frequently, he would appear with tiny hearts surrounding him. Very subtle. <laughs> I warned my brother about it, knowing that it was no big deal, as he was well out of Amanda's daily clutches. We went through a few uncomfortable family get-togethers with Amanda sighing and gazing at my brother before she finally seemed to move on. But did she actually move on? You know what I said about Amanda and subtlety? Anyway, OP says, I won't lie. I was a bit worried that this might be a big deal when she crashed my brother's wedding, but as we saw, it seemingly didn't come up. So a month or so goes by, and I have a Facebook message from Amanda. No, we weren't friends. She said hi, and I said hi back. And the next splurge of messages came while I was away, so no response from me. First, she asks if I knew why my brother set his profile to private. Because of people like you, Amanda. <laughs> <laughs> then she said she had a gift she wanted to send to my brother and to keep a copy for myself. It was a sketch of, apparently, my brother and I dancing at his wedding. He was drawn with blonde spikes. I was rendered with glasses. I switched to contacts when we were 14, so basically it was like high school versions of ourselves. Hearts floated behind us. I wouldn't have known that it was us at all, except that it was captioned with our names. Dude, this is like concrete proof positive of, of suspended adolescence, isn't it? There's a reason she never progressed past high school, because she still thinks that she's in high school. This was all followed with a question about whether or not my brother and I had ever experimented together. Oh, God. Oh, God. Uh... He added lots of winky face icons throughout these comments. Dude, uh, oh! <laughs> I need a minute, hold on. One minute later. Oh, after all, we weren't really siblings and therefore it wouldn't be incestual, huh? Dude, I, I hate this. She always figured that we had. Because it would be really hot if we had, and people would pay money for that. In fact, if I was interested, she had sketches she made that were more risque of my brother and I. You know, because apparently she had thought about it far too much. Oh my god, dude. Uh, what an entry to go out on. I thought we were past the worst of it. I don't, I, I don't even know what to say. I read all of this, my jaw on the floor, then terrified at what was about to come next, I told her that she was blocked to never ever contact me or my family ever again for any reason. It later turned out that my brother had set his profile to private because she had sent him similar messages 
and he had similarly shut her out. Dude, what? <laughs> uh, this is a lot to take in for a last post, isn't it? It's supposed to get like a nice pretty bow at the end and we all walk away and go, that was a good story, what a happily ever after, but Legbeards, man. Legbeards never change. Epilogue. Betty and Carl had long since given up on their sister. Amanda came home for one Christmas, and they rebelled by spending the holiday with their respective significant others. Oof, dude. <laughs> Amanda's mother attempted to keep talking to her, but Amanda was refusing to go to any therapy or do anything really to improve herself. Her parents having long since cut her off financially, she started calling up periphery relatives asking for cash. Basically, she managed to strangle the last bits of goodwill out of absolutely everyone. No surprise there, honestly, this is the way I thought things were gonna go. About a year after the wedding, their grandmother passed away. When Amanda's mother called her to inform her, apparently Amanda's response was so horrible, it was enough to make her mom give up on her for good. She immediately asked about the inheritance, didn't she? Just before we finish up this saga, we're sinking to lower and lower depths. I wonder what happened to Amanda now, dude. Like, these stories were posted eight years ago. Do you think Amanda's just a bag lady out there somewhere? Be careful, fellas. If a bag lady starts making moony eyes at you. <laughs> uh, anyways, all of this took a toll on her mother, who has looked just tired and haggard over the past few years. She was honestly a good mom and giving up on one of her children was too much for her. She won't even talk about Amanda since she broke off contact. The first I saw her perk back up was with the birth of their first grandchild. Because of this, I have no idea what Amanda's been doing for quite a little while. Nor should it matter, OP. Let it go. Same trash, different day. For decades on end. OP says, I recently started my own business and was looking for help. I advertised on my town's Facebook page and... To my surprise, I got a resume from Amanda, address listed as being out of state, but that she was looking for work to move back to the area. It listed her as freelance illustrator and graphic designer. Graphic design is my passion. All of her actual work experience was just short stints at minimum wage jobs. Nothing wrong with minimum wage, but... There is an issue when you can't hold down a job for more than six weeks. The bullet points were all tiny pink hearts. I laughed, I told my brother, I laughed even more, and I deleted her resume. <laughs> uh, I mean, don't delete it, just put it on the bottom of the pile. That's what I do. In my mind, Amanda is either the seven-year-old with the water gun laughing as we played, tweens at the amusement park allowed away from our parents for the first time on a roller coaster, the pouting girl at fall formal, pouting in the stands with gunked on lip gloss, half naked at a frat party, or flipping out in the parking lot. What an unapologetic wreck of a human being. I applaud everybody who, who tried to stick by her and make her change, OP her parents, but she just is who she is, as I said many parts ago, for better or for worse. I'm absolutely positive that life has not gone well for her, unless she's made some changes, but yeah, I don't think that she's motivated to make any changes. She wants everybody in the world to adjust for her, and at a certain point she's gonna find out that that that's over. Here's a hard lesson, you're the one that needs to adjust. Maybe she did, maybe she's doing great, but if I'm being really honest, <laughs> she's probably not. But let's do a little bit of a, a song, I, I got one somewhere around here, what is this? Battle him of the Republic, and it's copyright free. All right, let's do this then. My eyes have seen some shit that I'll be happy to convey. Tales of neck beards and trolls and leg beards with their freak flags on display. There's a phase of crazy exes that still vexes me today And things I can't unsee Glory stories to peruse 
some gory stories of abuse. The poor me stories should amuse ya. Please share some cringe with me. That'll do it. Short and sweet. <laughs> How we like them. Thanks, guys, so much for watching, especially if you watched this far. Like, comment, sub, share the video around if you want. Check out them links in the description, TikTok, Twitter, Discord. Um, I'm all over the internet, really. Thank you, as always, to my Patreon patrons, my YouTube channel members, helping me to make it through the toughest months. If you can join them, that's huge. If not, that's okay. Just join me again tomorrow. In order to do so, you need to keep yourself safe out there. Wash your hands. And of course, always remember, friends, that you are loved, you are worthy, you definitely, definitely deserve it, and I shall see you in the next one. So until then, bye-bye. Uh, it's only worth it if you work for it. I won't stop till they hear me now. I won't stop till I wear the crown. Legbeard stories never truly end. We can wind it back and watch it again. Forever and ever and ever and ever.